Hey, friends, it's Matt Murphy and the Matt Murphy Radio Show, Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Glad to have you with us. It is 12.05 and, oh, wait, wait now, check it. I don't want to start off with a lie. It's 12.06 on my mark. Mark, on this Friday, January 15, uh, January 15, man, oh, man, can I start the show over? The I blame. Was wrong I blame too. you. I blame you. It's 12.06. Mark. Oh, so you've got the real time in yeah. there. So I'm keeping bad time. Why yeah. do we even keep this Radio Shack timer in here? It's just tradition. It's been there since right before FM was invented. Oh yeah. Oh, that, I bet it was a. I bet it was a. Hey, congratulations! FM is here. So here's a clock. Uh, anyway, Matt Murphy, the clock says it's twelve oh six. I don't know if that's right or not. Uh, I will be here until roughly three o'clock on your uh, on your clock, and we appreciate your participation in every single part of the proceedings. Let me get the pleasantries out of the way and get things underway under its own weight. It is Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Uh, we have a variety of platforms by which you can utilize uh, this radio show for your edification, information, and entertainment. Uh, you can go to the FM dial. Obviously, many of you do that, 99.7 FM. 100,000 watts from way into Kentucky to way into Alabama and all points in between. There we are. Uh, then there's the Internet streaming platforms. A lot of people utilize these, especially folks who are on the go. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you can take us with us. You can put us right there in your ears, in your ear earbuds or whatever. Uh, dial us up on your internet streaming platform of choice, uh, whether it's um, Spotify, iHeart. There's a lot of them. Uh, we're everywhere. Uh, so you find one, you type in Supertalk 99.7 WTN, and there we are. You click on us, and off you go. Then there's the possibility that maybe you want a little more Supertalk 99.7 WTN in your life. You can download the app. You go to the app store of your choosing. I don't know what kind of technology you're dealing with over there. And you type in the aforementioned Super Talk 99.7 WTN and off you go uh, with our own app. You can click us and, uh, you know, there's biographies and there's all sorts of different things to do on the app. And then, of course, Super Talk TV. Super Talk TV is up and running on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Super Talk TV is a, an opportunity for you to see why most of us are in radio in the first place. Episode 495 of the proceedings happening right here on this day, Friday, January 19. 2024 and today's episode on the television side of things you know we let headless bell title these even though he refuses to participate man you would look great on tv today with your toboggan on it's cold in here it i'm glad it's cold in here because i got the lebowski sweater on and this is the warmest room in the building because of all the equipment is it cold in there yes well i'll come in there on uh, i've got to turn the lights down because if i don't turn the lights down it gets hot in here and if it gets hot in here when i'm wearing warmer clothing i get grumpy and that could be good or bad grumpy murphy is good for programming purposes it's not good for bell yeah <laughs> that's true so one way or the other episode 495 is entitled murphy show reminding you knowledge is power and power corrupts so study hard and be evil the libertarian lunch noon to three flaming hot cheetos it just keeps going guys it just keeps it's as long as the show itself, the title, and that's why we love him. There's Headless Bell behind the glass, making sure that everything that comes out of our speaker sounds as good as possible. Inundate him with telephone numbers on a First Amendment Freestyle Friday, 615-737-9986, 615-737-9986. We're family, right? We're all family here. Uh, whether you love me or not, you know, if you consider me the crazy uncle that sits in the corner and mumbles to himself, that's fine, and it's pretty accurate. Uh, but we are all family. And when I tell you this, I tell you this as family. I don't want you to turn the radio down. I don't want you to go anywhere else. I want you to listen from now until really beyond 3 o'clock. I want you to enter the drive with Brian Wilson. I want you on to Mark Levin. I want you to listen all weekend long and back here on Monday for Nashville's Morning News. But that doesn't mean I can't be honest with you. And I'm going to be honest with you. It's a slow news day. It is. It is the culmination of a, a week of snow and ice and fun and frivolity, especially for those of you with youngsters. We've got a lot of snow still on the ground, expected to be here all the weekend long. It is... Um, there's not a lot going on in the state legislature. As a matter of fact, precious little as they decided to stay out all week. Many school systems have been out all week. There's not a lot of action moving forward. I feel like we've got some hits to sling for you, and I'm going to make it interesting and entertaining. That's my job. 
These are the days that we shine on the Matt Murphy Show on Super Talk 99.7 WTN, if I do say so myself. But there's not a lot new going on in the news. A lot of the same old hits. You know, tip, normally, Super Talk 99.7 WTN and what we do and our format more broadly, news talk radio, it's like we're... Sl what, what would be... What would be the music format that we are? We're like, we're uh, we're new, we're new, we're pop, right? I mean, we're slinging something new every day. No, we're too edgy to be pop. What? what the, I mean, we're we're dirty, filthy, heavy metal. Okay, sure, we're dirty, filthy, heavy heavy metal. Well, today we're the oldies station. Yes, we because are because we're slinging the oldies, right? We're slinging uh, border security. We're slinging foreign entanglements and foreign wars. We're slinging racism. I'll get to that a little bit later on today. We're slinging uh, we're slinging all of the regular hits on the show today. Now there is a couple of there are a couple of things going on that you should know about. Uh, the March for Life is happening in Washington D.C. just off the National Mall. I've seen one of the March for Lives. So I I, don't, I wouldn't say that I was a participant, more of an observant, um, as I happened upon it one uh, one of my trips uh, to Washington D.C. It's the 51st annual March for Life in Washington, D.C., and they're currently engaged in that as the snow falls uh, over the afternoon in Washington, the nation's capital. That's happening. I have a story to tell you about CNN. I mean, I call CNN. I heard Han say he doesn't like the hashtag nevers, uh, although I was the originator of the hashtag never CNN. Uh, I did that because of the never Trump people. You know, everybody was hashtag never Trump, hashtag never Trump, hashtag never Trump. How about hashtag never CNN? is what I said to myself. I said, self, how about hashtag never CNN? And we win with it. I say hashtag never CNN because you should never watch CNN. CNN is a garbage network full of garbage people spewing <clears throat> garbage. But I would suggest to you that it's important that you have somebody on that line observing what they're doing and reporting back to you. Well, I'm your huckleberry. I'm on that line, I stand that line, I observe what they're doing, and I report back to you. And it ain't good over there at CNN. Have you ever wondered? I, I would love an opportunity not to judge but to observe an individual that only gets their news from CNN or from MSNBC. Have you ever wondered what their world is like? where they don't get to the truth of some of these issues, where they don't get both sides of a story, where they're not allowed to decide for themselves fairly and accurately where they fall on any given issue. I'm not even asking people to be conservative. I'm not asking people to be libertarian. I'm asking for news organizations to present the full truth and allow people, grown adults, to, to decide for themselves. Sadly, we were already heading in a direction where the government of the United States of America and its mainstream media myrmidons and sycophants consider you children and treat you as such. You know, you're not grown enough, you're not able enough to make decisions for yourself about mostly anything in America nowadays, according to the political left or to hashtag never CNN. I just wonder what the, what, what the conversation would be like if you had an open-ended discussion with someone who only got their news from CNN. Keith says they're the ones riding around in their car by themselves with three masks on. That's probably true. That's probably true. E and I watched... Um, e and I watched last night on Netflix. We Oh, by the way. Squirrel. Have you done the Dusty Slay yet? I I need to. Uh, do you want to steal Netflix from me for a night to watch Dusty Slay? Yeah, actually, I would because I want to see that. It's really I saw, good. I saw a clip, a, an actual um, promotional clip, not the trailer, but there was another thing that he put out on his channel that had a, a great joke in it. So that kind of fired me up even more. It's really, really good. Uh, if you've not caught, uh, we've had Dusty on the show on a couple of occasions. He lives out in Hermitage, uh, and he's a great guy. And... Um, Regular at Zanies. Regular at Zanies. And, and you know, I, I started to say something, and, and then I stopped myself, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. I, I think it's fair to say Dusty's a fan of the show, and we're a fan of his. I yeah. think that's mutual. Yeah. 
I mean, I, he he stays out of the politics. He stays out of yeah. the political world, and I don't blame him. I mean, it is a it is a. I love watching. He, inter- he doesn't need that material. No, 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 no. That's not that's not what he does. Uh, he's for everybody, and he's great. Uh, he's fabulous at what he does, and he's got a new special on Netflix called Working Man, and we need to support the guy. And so we watched that two nights ago, and it was fabulous. And so I saw in looking for Working Man, I saw that there was a uh, Bargetsy special that I had not seen. Obviously, this is an older one because <clears throat> I think the last one he did came out on Amazon. Yeah, it was in 2021. And that one, I, I, lo- I was looking for that one, actually, because I don't think I've seen all of that one. That's the one he's in, like, the white and black yes. leather jacket? Yes. Um, and that is on Amazon. You're correct. The one that I found was from 2021. It was recorded in 2020. It's from Vegas? Is that the one? It's where called the, the World's Greatest Average American, I think. Is it, like, all blue and everything and... And then there's hell. I mean, have you ever seen it? Yeah, that's from Vegas because if you watch the crowd shots, everybody's like, there's almost no crowd because of social distancing. Well, and it was Bargetsy is hilarious, absolutely fabulous. He really is. Uh, and I can understand why Dusty and Nate gravitated together and do the Nate Cat uh, Nate Land podcast together because I think they're different but similar. Mm-hmm. You know, they. Uh, they're both "quote unquote" clean comics. Uh, they don't need cursing in their in their in their sets to uh, to be funny, and they're very, both very funny. Uh, they both have similar styles of humor, but not similar styles of delivery. Uh, it's observational humor mostly. A quick aside: I was listening to Sirius XM on the way in, and they played a Bargatze segment where he was talking about being so drunk he locked himself out of his hotel room naked. <laughs> And I thought, man, that would never go in a Bargatze set these days. That's pretty good. But I'm watching, and I realized how insane. So we watched this uh, bid, the the world's greatest average American or something like that. That was in Vegas? Yeah. I couldn't figure out if it was like in Vegas. Yeah, I figured it was, was, I mean, it was obviously out of doors. Uh, And Erica noticed early on. She said, it's annoying me because all of the laughs are muffled because everyone in the crowd As was masks, forced yeah. to wear a mask, and it sounds like a, a laugh track. And and you could tell, Bargetsy actually comments on doing a, he did a comedy show on Zoom. And you can tell, he you know, he was trying, he was keeping a good attitude about it. You could tell that he, he didn't want to, he didn't want to crap on it, but he wanted to crap on it. But the helicopters above him kept annoying him. Well, I'm sorry. It was actually shot at uh, Universal Studios in California. I thought it was California. Yeah, so correcting myself. Too. Well, but out of doors and everybody and uh, a smaller crowd. He's still funny as hell, but uh, I encourage you to look at that one after you look at Working Man. That was the whole point is to uh, promote our local comedians. We got uh, Dusty Slay, who's not originally from Tennessee, but moved here years ago, uh, lives out in Hermitage. And uh, I believe Nate is what? Old Hickory? If yeah. I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, last I heard, he's probably, you know, up in Franklin now in a mansion. Uh, we're trying to get Dusty back on. I think he's got, I think they've got a watch party going on at Zany's later on this month, if I'm not mistaken, that you and I are invited to. Oh, I'd love to go to that. Oh, it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, Tremendous. And, and it's a trip. And it was, uh, and by the way, kudos to Dusty. As of two days ago, Working Man, the number two watch to show on Netflix. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. How about that? Number two watch show on Netflix. I think strong. yesterday it was number three. Uh, but the day after its release, it was released on the 16th. It was the number two show watch. Uh, so uh, support your local artist and support Dusty Slay. He's a good guy. And uh, we're having a good time. It's 1219 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Back to hashtag never see it in in just a moment. I know you wa- don't watch this garbage. So I've got a clip for you that you will be amused by. Plus, yes, 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 yes. To all of you. We are aware that it is the Queen's birthday, and we will respond accordingly on the show today on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Stand by.
I'm on the record as saying she's the finest living human being walking the face of the earth, and she's having a birthday today, and I think we ought to celebrate. Dolly Parton is uh, celebrating her 78th birthday on this day, January 19th. Oh, she's 70, turning 77. 78. 34. Always 34. All right, now you now you have me doubting myself, and so I'm going to check it out. We can go no further until we confirm one way or the other uh, what her birthday. So, uh, she is 78 years old today. She was born on January 19th, uh, 1946. Dolly Rebecca Parton, uh, not only an American singer, songwriter, and actress, not only a national treasure, but a world treasure. And I defy. And and by the way, people think that I'm kidding. I'm not. I, I think Dolly Parton's the finest person walking the face of the earth. Um, I think she's a good person. I think she genuinely cares about other people. And she decided a long, long time ago that she was going to utilize her talent to help others. And she does so in so many different ways. Uh, she treats her employees uh, with dignity and respect, uh, whether it's, you know, some worker over at Dollywood or her closest confidant. Uh, she has a lifelong, um, incredible uh, marriage, much to my and many other men's chagrin, with um, with her life partner Carl Dean. I just uh, and and then not to mention her um, oh what Imagination Library, uh, which has helped uh, millions, literally millions of kids uh, read that's, better. That's also proof that you're not a real fan, because a real fan would have the Dolly Parton Imagination Library license plate. Hmm. Hmm. I gosh, I you know I get it, but boy, I like that blue. I like that blue how it pops on my truck. I'm just that vein. I'm just I don't you know what? No, no, I'm not going to be sucked into this by you. I don't have to Too prove. Late. <laughs> I don't have to prove my love of Dolly Parton to you or anybody else, pal. Wow, getting defensive there, aren't we, buddy boy? I don't I don't have to wear my love of Dolly on my sleeve or on my truck or anywhere else. As a matter of fact, I don't like people that do that. Thank you very much. I don't like personalized license plates, and there aren't many of those n vanity plates or novelty plates that I care for either. So there. Well, you you realize that one actually benefits the library, right? I don't care for the purposes oh. of this rant. Wow. I give my, you know, I angered a lot of grown people parents years ago and i stand by this take by the way you want to talk about controversial takes like my take on mount rushmore which i don't have a problem with mount rushmore i don't have a problem with some sculptors going up there and, and sculpting themselves some heads of our our nation's founding fathers etc uh, what i have a problem with is they didn't clean up and i don't understand why they didn't clean up and i don't understand why more people aren't annoyed by this you you chiseled off a bunch of stone what is that granite you chiseled off a bunch of granite and then you just left the pile there why didn't you pick that up and take it with you why would you spend the money to do that because it's ugly have you seen it yeah it's ugly i, I, I did whatever. it would look so much better if it was just a natural setting and you come upon it and boom and by the way tons Mount of rocks that is though i don't care i mean what I, we spend the money to to make the thing Let's finish it, for goodness sake. Much and you could, sell, nothing. you could sell the rock. <laughs> Nobody wants, wants to buy that. Oh, no. Except I, maybe a construction don't, company. Don't, don't, uh, don't trample on Dan Mandis' dreams. Dan Mandis had a good idea this morning. And I think, you know, it. I'm going to say this as a joke, and people are going to take it seriously, and they're going to communicate with Dan that I was smacking on him, but I just want to say it's a joke. Dan Mandis has good ideas, so rarely we should we should promote them when they come along. And he had a great idea I, this I, morning. I would just like to officially remove myself from this conversation. I preempted now. it by saying it was a joke. So uh, no, he said that they should take the stones and they should ch and you know stamp them with some sort of seal of approval and sell them in the gift shop or whatever. Anyway, my take on this issue with. Um, declaring yourself a fan of this thing or that thing on your automobile. All of you parents whose kid is an honor roll student, nobody cares. Nobody cares. All of you parents who have, you know, a little girl named Allison that likes ballerina or 
ballet and a little boy named Caleb who likes softball. All you're doing is telling pedophiles who are driving on the highway behind you what your kids' names are and what they their interests are. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop it. Yeah, but I want to show my child that I love them. If that's the way you're showing your kid you love them, I think maybe there are better ways. I give them a hug. I don't know. Yeah, but that's the way that I support their local softball, or that's the way I support their local ballet. Okay. Okay. Why not just give the local, you know, dance school that Allison is dancing at 20 bucks and leave it at that and leave the crap off the back of your car. And also, nobody gives a crap about your stick figure, figure family. Nobody. All right, that's my random rant of the day. It's 1230. Well, it, it did. We'll get to news in just a moment. CNN is once again declaring that there's racism all over the United States of America. And we'll tell you what the latest is. And we have a representative in the halls of Congress just lying, just absolutely lying about something that she says happened to her and it's time to call her out on it. We'll do that next. It's 1230. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Homeowners simply trust USS, and you will trust them as well. And I implore you that if you've noticed issues within your home, go ahead and make the call that so many others have made to United Structural Systems. Let's talk about it uh, because it grants you peace of mind. And at USS, United Structural Systems, they're the company that can give you that. If you've noticed signs that your house is settling in a way that causes you, well, some concern, uh, USS can lay those concerns to rest. They can come out and say, look, this is just normal settling, normal issues, nothing to worry about. Keep a monitor on it. If you see this or that, uh, let us know. If you've noticed mold or mildew in your basement or your crawl space, you need to get USS out in your life too uh, because they can alert you to mold, mildew issues. Waterproofing is a thing. Water encapsulation is so important for you and your family and your home because literally that mold and that mildew could cause health problems with your family as well. It, it is about the structure of your home. Obviously, it's about protecting that large investment. It's also about protecting you and your family. That's what they do at USS. Over 25,000 satisfied customers in 30 years of service to Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky, and Northern Alabama. It's USS United Structural Systems. 615-488-7855, Six, uh, 688-7855 or USSTN.com. That's USSTN.com.
Happy birthday to Dolly Parton today, 78 years old. It's 1236, Super Talk 99.7 WTN. We continue on the Matt Murphy Show. You're invited to be a part of the show at any point during the proceedings. 615-737-9986. 615-737-WWTN. I have a, uh, I have a pretty big announcement about these Fridays. So, you know, the 1 o'clock hour on these Fridays that we visit together... Uh, we have our good friend, legal correspondent, gambling buddy, and life consultant, Jay St. Clair, on with us. And he'll be on moments from now. And we call that Fry Jay. That is kind of inside of the day that is Friday. Fry Jay happens at 1 o'clock. But I have, for the last 20 years, referred to our visits together on now, Super Talk 99.7 WTN and at previous radio stations, I've called our Friday get togethers First Amendment Freestyle Friday. And I've always enjoyed it. It's alliterative, it makes sense as to what we do. But it has always rang a little hollow in as much as we're kind of a First Amendment freestyle show every day of the week. We designate Fridays as such. But it really harkens back to the godfather himself. I mean, Rush Limbaugh, the late great, had something called Open Line Friday, where the idea was you could call about anything of your choosing. And it was at a time in our format and in our medium where telephone callers were more of a regularity. I don't suspend telephone calls anytime, but we don't get a lot. We don't get the. Talk radio generally does not get the level of telephone communication that it used to because there are other ways to communicate with the show. A lot easier ways to communicate with the show, primarily text messaging. When we received, I've noticed when I love the super text line, absolutely love the super text line. But when the super text line became a thing, I noticed that the caller volume went down because people oh, could text. It, it plunged. And I and and that's good. I it makes sense though. No, it makes perfect sense. I love the dialogue between a caller and myself. And I I believe it or not, and I know I get worked up from time to time, but I love absolutely love it when people call me that disagree with me. And now I don't suffer fools gladly, and folks know that as well. But with all of that in mind, I think next week, next week. We're going to announce new branding for our Friday visits. And I have something in mind. But I want to do it the right way. So, you know, 8957 says I could have a Second Amendment shotgun Saturday. That's pretty good, actually. I love that. But uh, we're, we're resetting and rebranding our Friday visits together starting next week. And uh, I'll uh, I'll make you wait for it, and we'll announce that next week. I'm very excited about it on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. That person called and didn't want to go on the air, right? Or was it a was it a telemarketer? We need to uh, uh, verify our Google phone number. Oh, really? Do we? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, it, they won't stop. Also, your um, it's my understanding that your automobile insurance is now expired, and you need to well, my my your- warranty. Oh, that's right. Your automobile warranty is now expired. You need to re-up your automobile warranty. Wendy says, I love texting Cousin Matt and Creepy Uncle K. Uh, thank you, Wendy. We love you, too. You're one of our favorites on the Super Text line. 615-737-9986. 615-737-WWTN. So uh, just put it on your calendar. Wait a minute. I'm not here next Friday. I just realized that. You know what? Where are you? I'm out of, I'm out of town. I'm in uh, Tampa, Florida. I have a uh, I have a trip to a personal trip to take to Tampa. Well, I, I it seems like this would be more important. I'm getting hair extensions. Why? I'm just kidding. Um, I I agree that it's very important, but I, I'm taking MLK Day next Friday, so it'll be the following Friday, one way or the other. We'll get it done. Okay. Uh, hashtag never CNN. Don't watch this garbage network. I'll watch so you don't have to. To wit, Representative Barbara Lee was on um, with Caitlin Collins. Caitlin Collins, a woman with no upper lip. I mean, Caitlin Collins is the prettiest uh, masculine figure that I think I've ever met in my life. I, she's, uh, 
I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to comment on her looks. Uh, but one way or the other, Caitlin Collins on CNN, you know Caitlin. She's become like the, uh, now that they've dispatched of all of their other ne'er-do-wells, uh, like Cuomo and uh, what what was his name? The guy that- the potato. Uh, 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 the potato's gone. And uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Don oh, Lemon. Uh, uh, Don Lemon. That's right. Now that they've dispatched of all of those uh, individuals, uh, they've got Caitlin there in the evenings, and, and she is just the star, the rising star on CNN. Uh, she has uh, she has BRF. Is that fair, Bell? BRF? What, what's that mean? The last word is face. Oh, R, uh, RBF. Oh, I go BRF. No, it's resting face. I thought it was mm, resting face. No. Am I saying it wrong? You're saying it wrong. One way or the other, is it fair to put that on Caitlin Collin? I, I mean, could... I, by the way, I have I have the same thing. I have BRF. Oh, don't you ever. Um, I couldn't pick her out of a lineup. Caitlin Collin, you would know her if you saw her. Uh, maybe, but I, I can't picture the face in my head when you say her name. Okay. I, I don't watch CNN... Even so, they don't have to. I I, I have no time for it. <laughs> I do. Uh, well, I and, and trust me, as someone who has uh, BRF, I, I've always called it BRF, and I'm not going to be able to change. If I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. I, I've always had BRF, um, and people, I mean, it, it is, look, it is a burden. And if you watch on Super Talk TV, you'll see it from time to time. I have this, this look. This look right here. This is my look. You see that? And so that's the way I carry myself on a regular basis. And so on a regular basis, almost a daily basis, I get asked if I'm okay. And, you know, in a normal day cycle, I can get away with it. I can just, yeah, I'm fine, whatever. Uh, but sometimes if I'm in the wrong kind of mood, RBF. Okay, so Tim writes in, our good friend up in Sumner, and says that Bell is right, it's RBF, not BRF, and I am right that Caitlin Collins has it. So we're both right. It's a big day. I'll try to, uh, I'll try to adjust my nomenclature. One way or the other, I have it, and if you do have it, then you have to deal with are you okay a lot. And it's annoying uh, because I'm going through my day, I'm perfectly fine, and I get people, are you okay? Is everything all right? And I'm like, at some point, you get tired of saying, it. yes, I'm okay. And then you're not okay. So people think that you're not okay when you say you are okay because you answer you are okay in that fashion because 14 people have asked you today if you're okay. And you prove them right. And you prove them right. And they walk away thinking, man, I knew he was grumpy by the way he was looking. And look at him, he's grumpy. But I wasn't grumpy until you made me grumpy asking me if I'm grumpy. One way or the other, here's Caitlin Collins with Representative Barbara Lee. She's looking grumpy, as always. She's got that one eyebrow kicked up. And, uh, well, I'll just let the clip speak for itself. These are not little kinks, first of all. Racism, institutional racism, is in the DNA of this country. When you look at uh, what has taken place, look at the, our Native American the genocide of Native Americans. When you look at what is taking place as it relates to African Americans, uh, the 250 years plus of enslaving African Americans, and then you look at the disparities now uh, in our community in terms of health care, unemployment, the wealth gap, housing, you can't tell me that systemic racism does not exist. It's not just a little kink. Secondly, you have personal racism, which is hard to address, but I'll give you one little story that shows you why uh, we need to understand that I don't think she really understands racism. I was walking from the House building on Capitol Hill to the Capitol, and a man, a white guy, stopped me and told me I could not get into the member's elevator. And, you know, we have uh, pens, and I was going to vote. And he blocked me from getting into the elevator and told me I was not a member of Congress, and it was for members only. I said, sir, I'm a member of Congress. And he, I showed him my pen, and he said, whose pen did you steal? Now, this is an example of what personal racism is and how people of color constantly have to deal with this each and every day but systemic racism is in the policies of this country and just look at what they're trying to do in terms of eliminating diversity equity and inclusion they're trying to uh, not allow for an equal and level playing field uh, and so mm -hmm. it's a very dangerous uh, position that she has uh, she's clueless well that's a shame and I'm sorry that, that you had to deal with that congresswoman thank you for sharing that with us and thanks 
that's the end of the clip. That actually, Biden commented on that. Joe Biden has? He has. You what, hear did, it? what did Joe have to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, I did not have it on my bingo card that I would agree with you today, but I agree with you, pal. Let me express this to you. I've never been so sure of something in my entire life. There is 0.0% chance of that ever happening in the manner in which she described it. 0.0. Allow me to offer my evidence that there is 0.0 chance of her ever having that happen to her in the manner in which she described it. Why hasn't she talked about it before now? Would that have been a Capitol Police member that she would be going through? Right, those Capitol Police officers that do nothing wrong, those Capitol Police officers that were there to protect them on January 6th the, during that insurrection, those Capitol Police officers who have suffered so much at the hands of MAGA Republicans. Yeah, those Capitol Police officers. Yes, so I would have difficulty believing she didn't report that. I have difficulty believing that she wouldn't have reported it immediately should it have happened that way. And rightly so. If what she is describing actually happened, it would have been immediately reported and that individual would have been immediately fired. But she just gets away with it and promotes this schism between black people and brown people and white people. And earns a tidy living doing it. And Caitlin Collins, you ought to be embarrassed for yourself. You know that's a bunch of pablum, yet you sit there and you let it happen out of fear, either fear or ignorance. You're either afraid to dive any further. Okay, I thought of a third reason. One, you're afraid to die, uh, dive any further because you know the truth and you don't want to be accused of racism yourself you don't want the tide to turn on you or you're just completely ignorant you're not really listening to anything that's going on around you you're not hearing what the woman says or number three you're complicit in it you know that what she's saying is a bunch of garbage yet you allow it to happen i tend to believe that it's number three that you know that what this is what is being said is a bunch of garbage, yet you just allow it to happen. She makes something up. Now, at best, what happened? And can you not see this, Bell? What this woman just said, the way she described it, that, sir, I'm a member of Congress, and he says, whose pen did you steal? Worst case scenario, this is what happened. Barbara Lee's getting in the elevator. Excuse me, ma'am. This is for members only. Uh, on, only members of Congress here. I'm a member of Congress. Here, look, I have a pen. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Come on in. Well, who was it? Was it Sheila Jackson Lee who did not wear her pen and then threw a tantrum because she was stopped? Because she wanted to go around the security. Right, yeah. Apparatus. Members so no of Con win. yeah, members of Congress are allowed to go around security. And I've done this before with several different members of the body. In the tunnels, I was uh I was invited one year. Um, I was honored enough to be invited to go to the State of the Union. Sadly, it was the final year of Barack Obama in 2016. It was his final State of the Union, so at least we had that going for us. I sat right down from I've told you the story, right? I've sat right down from Michael Keaton. Yeah, Batman. But you weren't allowed to have phones, so I've got no video evidence of any of this happening. But he was right down there. He was a guest of some member of California. Anyway, um, and we had to go through like 14 different levels of security. And every time uh, Representative Mo Brooks invited me uh, from Alabama, and we went from Mo's office and we walked through the tunnels underneath um, from, I forget the build. I think it was Longworth where he was, or Cannon, one way or the other. You go from the building, you get into the tunnel, you go underneath, and you pop out on the Capitol side. Well, in that tunnel, even within the tunnel, you have to go through, I think we went through four security checkpoints in the midst of the tunnel. So, you know, you get to a, uh, you get to a connection point where there are different tunnels going in different directions, and there's a security checkpoint. And every security checkpoint, I had to go through security, 
So I had to walk through the metal detector and all of that, and Mo walked around because he had the pin on. They see the pin, they wave him through. Me, I have to go through security. And so you're right. Sheila Jackson Lee did not have her pin on, and she has some egotistical, narcissistic expectation that everyone knows exactly who she is every second of every moment of every day, and she didn't have her pin on. And so rightly so, protecting the members of the House of Representatives themselves, the security members stopped her and said, wait, hold on a second. What are you doing? I'm a member. And she just threw a, a holy fit. And by the way, when did we find out about that? It was like months later, wasn't it? No, it was the day after. I think it was the day after it happened. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Uh, which is evidence that it happened in the way that she described it. And very quickly, I mean, she, you know, laid some la layers on there that weren't true. But very quickly, they figured out what went on. And it was dismissed as something that the security guard should have done. This thing, I want to know, I mean, how embarrassing is it for Collins that she did, just didn't ask, when did this happen? Wh wh where was this, ma'am? And when did it happen? Because if that story isn't made up, which it is, somebody needs to be fired. But this is what Democrats get away with. They get to make things up on national television, and they aren't challenged on it. When Republicans try to tell the truth on national TV, like Donald Trump the other night, he's shut down by hashtag never CNN. He is shut down by MSNBC for telling the truth. It's 12.53 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Hey guys, it's a new year. It's time for a new you. And if you've experienced energy loss over the last year or so, or maybe even longer, did you know that the average guy waits years before he goes to the doctor to do something about it? Let's not do that. Let's not be that guy. Let's get to Tennessee Men's Clinic and talk to the experts today about what they can do to help your energy levels in a variety of different ways. You know, something that affects at least 50% of men as we mature are bedroom style issues issues with intimacy in the bedroom now look i'm not here to get into your bedroom there's nothing to be embarrassed about when i tell you that half of guys are going to deal with this at some point in their life what if i told you that there was a way where you didn't have to deal with it anymore that you can get t levels back up you can get energy levels back up you can do it with the tennessee men's clinic i understand you hate going to the doctor i understand the guys like to whistle past the graveyard but it's time to stop all of those things get back to an energetic lifestyle today with tennessee men's clinic guys it is time to feel amazing again it's time to hit those goals in the gym it's time to get the energy back up again so you can go out and shovel the snow or whatever you might be doing over the january uh, season 615-208-9090 is the telephone number that can begin this process for you schedule an appointment today i know you'll be treated with kindness you'll be treated with professionalism and they will get to the bottom of your issues and they have a prescription for success for you at tennessee men's clinic go to tennessee men's clinic.com to book an appointment today two locations to serve you one in midtown nashville the others in cool springs 615-208-9090 It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. It's just past 1 o'clock. In moments, it will be Fry J as we welcome Jay St. Clair to the program. That is right after I remind you that we're here till 3 o'clock this afternoon. Would love to hear from you. 615-737-9986. I would also remind you to get your questions in. We are going to drive questions to the Super Text line. You can call in with your question as well. Uh, Jay St. Clair is here, ready and available for you with any and all legal questions. So if you have a legal question, if you're looking for free legal advice, which is worth every penny that you pay for it, now's your time. 615-737-WWTN. That's 615-737-9986. Get those questions in, and we'll get to Jay presently. Sam has been holding in Nashville. He wanted to make a comment about Joe Biden. I want to get to Sam real quick before we introduce Jay to you. Hey, Sam, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. What's on your mind? Well, uh, first thing, I hope they uh, clear Briley Parkway because I use that all the time. But the reason I called was... Um, if Biden doesn't get what he wants, his supporters will uh, burn down again uh, San Francisco, L.A., and Portland like they did before. And compared to that, I think Trump is, uh, Trump is a simple clown, a jester, and a court fool. I think they ought to let him go. Wait, I, I missed the last part of that. Uh, so A court fool? Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, give me the pivot again. I think I think that Biden's supporters are arsonists, uh -huh. murderers, uh -huh. and um, and uh, like that. Biden supporters are arsonists and murderers, and thieves, and thieves. Okay. Yeah. Rico. Am I? Am I? Did I? Did I miss something, Sam? Did I? Did well, I, I think. Did, I think. It, I think. I think it's a simple threat that. Uh, Biden supporters say that if he doesn't win, then they'll do all of that. I think that. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, I mean, look, liberals don't know how to lose. And when liberals lose, there was cheating. I mean, we saw that in 2016, if that's your point. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, when point. when the when the GOP brings up legitimate instances of mm -hmm. concern with regard to uh, voting irregularity in 2020, we're called insurrectionists. Well, so speaking up for small business owners who want to have their businesses exist after the election, regardless. Well, we're a nation of law and order. I mean, whomever the candidates are, Sam. And, we so. and sadly, we have one political party that sees two different sets of rules with regard to the politics mm -hmm. of all of this. So if, mm -hmm. if I was to decide uh, that out of a, a sense of anger and um, disenfranchisement, 
uh, that I would gra- gather a group of people together to go and protest on the downtown public mm-hmm. square, wherever it might be. Dry cleaners, yeah, whatever. Dry cleaners, and I, you know, and I, yeah, whatever. we we would get arrested and we would get thrown in jail and we get prosecuted to yeah. the uh, full extent of the law. But if and black li- look the other way, well, but if Black Lives Matter does it or Antifa does mm-hmm. it, well, then that's a and natural. The prosecutors look the other way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And these are. Uh, and, and I believe I was loath, and thank you, Sam, for the call. I was loath uh, to buy into some of the conspiracy theories with regard to, or what I considered at the time conspiracy theories. This is five or six or seven years ago when we began her- hearing uh, that George Soros was using his money uh, to fund district attorney campaigns across the United States of America uh, to get into place in, in, in cities like Chicago and L.A., and places that are already predisposed to vote for liberal Democrats uh, to get into place district attorneys uh, that would be light on prosecutions, that would allow people out, that would be willing to consider things like cashless bail, for example, which they have in New York now. Uh, and what that would do ultimately to these major metropolitan areas and what it by extension would do to the United States of America, I was loath to believe any of that. Uh, I believe it now because we're seeing it come to fruition. We're seeing it in Memphis, Tennessee. We're seeing it in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I don't believe that Glenn Funk is necessarily a Soros man, uh, but he certainly is cut from the same cloth. Uh, But thank you for the call, Sam. We appreciate you. Ten minutes after the hour, we invite you to think about legal matters. We invite you to think what legal question you would ask some of the finest legal minds in the United States of America, nay, the world, because we have one of them on the show with us right now as I speak. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure at 10 minutes after 1 o'clock to proclaim it Friday. Look at, you don't come to this radio show For what I know, you come to this radio show for who I know, and I know this guy. He is one of the finest, nay, the finest legal mind that I have in my orbit. He is also my good friend, my golfing friend, my gambling buddy, and my life consultant. He is Jay St. Clair, and he joins us on the program today. Hey, Jay, what's going on, friend? How are you? Hey, man, if I were any better, I would be Mrs. Beast. She's loving the snow, buddy. Let me tell you that. Did you guys uh, down Birmingham way? Did you guys get any of the white stuff, or what did you get? Ice? What I, happened down I there? Call it snow. I call it ice. We got a little bit of snow, but it's, it's ice. You know how it's like down here. And I'm just reminded of how different the climate is between Nashville and Birmingham. You know, it's only three hours away, but man, Nashville gets some snow. Yeah, I mean, I I knew this when I moved to Nashville, and I you know I proclaimed uh, when I said goodbye to my friends in Birmingham on the radio that I looked forward to having a four season climate, right? Uh, because Birmingham really doesn't. I mean, no. there's not really any winter there. No, uh, but we got two, we got two seasons, man: summer and fixing to be summer. <laughs> I always said when I was dad, I always said that there were there was three seasons, right? There's and, and I could I could add a fourth with the fixing to be, but there's there's three seasons. There's summer, football, and Christmas. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. Well, I hope everybody's well down there. We we've still got snow on the ground. We got eight inches up here. Yeah. I mean Yep. No, I remember I remember well, you know, when I was clerking at the general or interning at the General Assembly, this was in nineteen seventy nine. Yeah, we had about an eight or ten inch snow. And it stays cold, right? It stays on the ground for a while. Mm-hmm. Well, that's nice, though. I mean, uh, if you oh, can yeah. stay out of it, if you don't have to drive in it, which I've been driving in it all week. I got the big old truck, so um, no worries for me. Uh, before we get to questions this week, Jay, I have it. Well, I guess it is a question because it's it's my question that I have for you. Uh, and we invite folks to call in or write in with any of your legal questions, 615-737-9986, and we'll cover every single one of them. So, um this uh, this case out in Georgia, um, uh-huh. and you know it's convoluted, and I mean it. I mean they they are. I mean, am I reading this wrong? That they're basically charging Trump and a bunch of other people 
for getting together and saying, hey, we don't think we lost this thing in Georgia. We think they cheated us out of this thing. So I want my team to do everything in our power to make sure that this was on the up and up and there was no cheating going on because I think that they stole this thing and I think we've got the votes here. I mean, that, that's basically what they're charging all of these folks with, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Or, or maybe you put it, I'd put it a little bit differently. They're, they're saying they're trying to steal the election back. I mean, I, I think they have to be saying they were trying to alter the outcome of the election. Right. They they claim that the the knowledge was present amongst those that were, quote, conspiring that they really lost. Right. Like my it, for Trump supporters, they would say, well, Donald Trump's just questioning whether or not he actually lost. And he truly believed he won. And there's nothing wrong with that. What what the prosecutors are claiming is that they really knew. Uh, but and they were doing this on the on the slide to try to steal it. Yeah, to, to, that's right. Get him declared the winner when he really didn't win, and and he knew he didn't win. Mm -hmm. Right, which is I, the, I think that's what they're claiming. Although it's a jumbled mess. I mean, it's hard to figure out exactly what they are claiming, man. To be perfectly honest with you. Uh, well, to add to this nonsense is um, is a new development in this case, which I haven't really talked a lot about because uh, mm -hmm. I'm just watching how all of this shakes out. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's gotten to the point where I think they're going to have a hearing on it now. Yeah. Uh, and and it involves the prosecutor, Fanny Willis. Cool. Cool. And uh, she apparently, and let's start here. She apparently has the ability in her office to hire special prosecutors for a mm -hmm. case like this, correct? Sounds like it. Yeah, no one, no one's uh, doubting her authority to hire her paramour. <laughs> did you just oh, I, I meant to say um <laughs> did you just say paramour i don't know why i meant, I... To, say, I meant to say barristers oh yeah right right so she has been accused of hiring someone that mm -hmm. that she has a, a relationship with a uh, she's having an affair a romantic with. relationship mm -hmm. right and explain to me why that might be a conflict of interest because she's paying, apparently the accusation is she paid this one individual $650,000 of the state's money. And yeah. the suggestions now being made that she hired this guy most specifically because of their romantic relationship and that yeah. she has benefited because he's taken her on a bunch of these, uh, a bunch of lavish trips or whatever uh, that one would conclude that in part he's paying for by the money that the state's paying him because she hired him to be her special prosecutor. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet deal. I don't. Why don't I ever get deals like that in my career? I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not doing it right now. Well, she's got a problem, right? I, there's no doubt about that. But let me be clear. This is what I think is the most important point about this. It says nothing about the strength or weakness of the case against Trump and the other defendants. I mean, uh, the, the case is, even if she is found guilty of all these things, that doesn't make the case go away. She's got a personal problem, and, and uh, it, most what might happen she may be taken off the case, or frankly, she may lose her job. But that doesn't make the underlying case go away. I mean, let me give you an example. Let's say, let's just change the facts a little bit. Let's say she, um, you're being prosecuted. Uh, for Well, no, let's just say Trump's being prosecuted. And the prosecutor robs a bank. I mean, he robs a bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no question about it. They got video and everything. Well, that doesn't mean the charges against Trump are dismissed. What it may mean is the prosecutor gets fired, and then a new prosecutor comes in and takes over the case. Because you see, the misconduct doesn't have anything to do with the merits of the case. Now, if it were, I don't, let me give you some different facts. Let's suppose that what she had been doing is destroying evidence. Okay. Now, could, could that lead to the case being dismissed? Absolutely. Right? Because that goes to the merits of the case. Or let's say that she was withholding evidence from Trump and the other defendants. That's misconduct that goes directly to the merits of the case. That could result in the case being dismissed. 
<laughs> but the fact that excuse me, the fact that she robbed a bank or stole money from the government doesn't say anything about the merits of the case against Trump. It may say something about her. She might want to be updating her resume mm-hmm. right now, and um, you know, making sure she's got Monster dot com bookmarked <laughs> on, on her um, website. <laughs> That's Monster dot com. I think isn't that one of those job search things? It was. I think I, I would go. I would have gone LinkedIn as my as my reference, okay. but uh, but Monster is perfectly serviceable. I but I think I, I think you went Monster dot com because of Danica Patrick. Wasn't she associated oh, with Monster? You know, I bet that's right. I bet that's why yeah. it came to your mind because I no, oh, but which by the way, I'm writing this down. That reminds me to ask you something about Danica Patrick. Have you seen Danica lately? Yeah. I mean, she has. Uh, she's gone all in on politics, buddy. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah it is absolutely. making me rethink my opinion about Danica Patrick. And you know I don't have a very positive opinion of Danica well, Patrick. Well, and y'all not, too. The interaction you had with her at the Barber Motorsports Park is absolutely inexcusable. And I, I respect you for holding that grudge for decades. That's the kind of grudge you hold for decades. Yeah, but I'm telling you, she could uh, she could get me back into the fold with one little interview with little old Matt Murphy <laughs> in Nashville, Tennessee. You see how shallow I, I am. Question. Has has Donald Trump yet fulfilled his promise of following you? Oh, boy, oh, boy. You have to bring <laughs> this up, don't you? I'm in a good mood. It's Dolly Parton's birthday, Jay. Yeah, I saw that. And, uh, and, and you have to bring this up. All right, hold on. Jay, I'm going to put Jay on hold. We're going to get to your calls and questions. They're coming in. Uh, yes, I'm being told by re- uh, any number of people uh, that Danica Patrick was not Monster.com. She was GoDaddy. My apologies. Uh, go daddy, go daddy, go daddy. Was go daddy a, um, a search engine for jobs? Some web, web hosting service, website hosting service. Oh, okay. So if I wanted to create a website, I could go there and they could, you know, fix me up. Okay. All right. So Danica was go daddy. I've got it. If you have a question for Jay St. Clair, come on. Uh, 615-737-9986. If we don't have legal questions for Jay on Friday, Jay, Jay and I are going to sit around and talk about our favorite Dolly Parton stories for the next half hour. It's 120 on Super... Oh, well, maybe you'd like that. Well, it's 120 on Super Talk 99.7 WTF. So how do you keep your important valuables secure from theft or fire? We talk about theft quite a bit. And rightly so. I mean, there's a danger there, especially if you live in a big city like Nashville where folks will break into your house. Well, if they break into your house, do you want them to get to your most precious items, whether it's important paperwork, jewelry, or your guns? Uh, Do you hide them in a box? Do you hide them under the bed? Or do you get yourself a safe from Nashville safe house? I would recommend the latter, not the former. Nashville safe house is the place to go for all uh, security of your valuables and your guns, etc. Mark and his team have been doing it for 30 years. Years. They are good at what they do, and it's all they do. You walk into Mark's place on 4th Avenue South, and here's the deal, folks. Mark doesn't sell furniture. Uh, Mark doesn't sell beds. Mark doesn't sell, you know, cars. He sells safes and vault doors, and that's it. And when you just sell safes and vault doors, do you know what you become an expert in over 30 years? Safes and vault doors. So it's not just him selling you something. He can answer your questions. He can fill you in on the latest advances in safes, uh, on fire ratings, on anything, any question you have, his team has answers for you. And so you're going to the best when you go to Nashville Safe House. And don't you want that for your most important valuables, for your family's safety? You want the best, don't you? I know you do. NashvilleSafeHouse.com. That's NashvilleSafeHouse.com. Or stop by and see them on 4th Avenue South right across the street from City Cemetery. Tell Mark and his team that Matt Murphy sent you to Nashville Safe House.
Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's 125. My name is Matt Murphy. Thank you for being with us on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. It's Friday. And it is, as, Re as Rebecca Black notes, it is, a, it is a moral, ethical, and personal imperative that you get down on Friday. 615-737-9986. My man Jay St. Clair is here. It's also Fried Jay. Many of your questions coming in fast and furious on the phone lines as well as uh, on the super text line. And we're going to get to said questions momentarily uh, just minutes from now. Dolly Parton is 78 years old, Jay. I want to ask you a very pointed and direct question. About Dolly Parton. Um, what is your favorite Dolly Parton song? It's Boy, a hard one. That's a, that's a tough one. It's a hard one. Um, I, you know, it's got to be Jolene. I, well, I just want to see one picture of Jolene. <laughs> I just want to know what she was packing. Jolene had to be packing something. If Dolly yeah. was worried about Jolene stealing her man. But I tell you, a close second for me would be Hard Candy Christmas. That's a good one, too, yeah. And I tell you, I love Coat of Many Colors. I mean, she's just got a bunch. Well, that for me, I mean, it's hard to beat the backstory of I Will Always Love You. I mean, right. and if yeah. you, as a song, I'm going Jolene more than, and she wrote those songs on the same day. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and I know, you know, I mean, Jay and I've talked about these things for years and I, I just, uh, uh, the fact that she wrote, I will always love you and Jolene, two of the greatest country music songs yeah. in the history of the genre on the same day, yeah. but the backstory, uh, and for those who don't know it, most do, it's a pretty famous Dolly story. Uh, she was with Porter Wagner and wanted to separate. She wanted to go out on her own and Porter kind of was holding the contract and he was, he was not wanting to let her go. And he was dug in on it, and uh, she wrote that song for Porter Wagner and gave it to him as a gift and as a way to say, you got to let me go. And he agreed. I think I have this right, Jay, that he agreed. He said, you let me produce the song, and then you put the song on the show, and then we'll work it out, and you can go out on your own. I had heard that part. But, you know, it's, a, it's just, and, and so it's not really a love song. Um, oh, no, not, not in the way. Yeah, not a romantic think. love song. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yes, well said. Uh, all right, so. Uh, Wait, uh, do I get to throw mine in? Yeah, sure. Come on. Little Sparrow. Oh, that's good. That's a good one. And 9 to 5. Ooh, 9 Ooh. to 5. That's another hey, good one. Hey, uh, Bill, you know, she got sued for that song, right? Claiming that she stole it from somebody else. I've, I re yeah. vaguely remember that. And so she went to court and testified. And she <laughs> explained to the jury how she wrote that song and how it came to her. And she was just typing, you know, taking her fingers, and she's got these six-inch nails on them, you know. And she said, this is how I got the beat. This is how it came. And she sat there and explained to the jury the whole way that uh, she wrote that song. Jury was out 15 minutes. That <laughs> That's called a win. It was great. I just want to see video evidence of Dolly sitting in court, tapping her fingers on the little, uh, you know, sitting there in the witness stand, tapping yeah, her real, finger. Exactly. No, it's great. I mean, it's great. Um, all right. Who, Bell, you tell me. Who should I go to? For? Well, I tell you what. 129, Super Talk. I want to put a cap on the Fannie Willis story, and then we're going to get to calls and questions. So, uh, Jay, I, I mean, you're so astute about these things. It doesn't make the case go away, but here, here's what I note that as you have said these many, many weeks that we've been discussing these cases against Donald Trump, if Donald Trump's not running for president, none of these cases are happening. Right. What I do believe could happen in Georgia because of Fannie Willis and because they have to sidebar all of this to deal with this Fannie Willis stuff now, right. I mean, is there any way that any of this comes to some sort of judgment before Election Day? Well, it certainly could delay it, and it, it makes it certainly more likely that – it will not happen prior to the general election in November. And what I want, you know, you and I are both big fans of chaos. So I want it to not happen until then. I want Trump to win the election. Then I want him to try him as president in Georgia and convict him and then see what happens. <laughs> what happens? I, mean, I don't think they're going to put him in jail in Georgia. No. 
I mean, so, yeah, the president of the United States of America, because of an ongoing suit against him, gets tried and convicted in the state of Georgia, and then what's next? Exactly. That's a great question. Well, I know yep. what's next for us. We've got to take a short time out. A lot of you have questions for uh, Jay St. Clair, and we'll get to each and every one of them. It's one thirty. It is a Friday on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, friends, it's Matt Murphy. Let me tell you about the world-famous McGill's Glock store just off Elm Hill Pike on Air Lane Drive. You need to go. You need to see it for yourself. They have an incredible retail facility. Uh, they've got a wonderful manufacturing facility as well. You know, they manufacture most of their own accessories right there on site. They ship all over the United States of America. And then there's the Shoot 270 lanes. May I'm, I'm sorry. I said lanes stupid me they don't do lanes they do rooms the shoot 270 rooms based on you know just the basic description you can shoot in 200 at 270 degrees out of a 360 degree circle uh, because they understand that life happens differently than would happen on a lane it makes shoot 270 completely different you've got personal firearms training uh, they will rent you guns you can bring your own firearms or try one of their selection of rental guns uh, you get 270 degrees of movement in the space their private shooting rooms are just a different and ask them about the february 3rd event the sentinel training event it is a specialized training uh, that will get in depth and help you understand what to do for crisis management what to do in the aftermath of a crisis situation uh, and that's going on on february the 3rd it is a limited space event only 18 individuals can get into this event so you want to go ahead and sign up right now and you never know you might see matt murphy there you might see dan mandis there we might just pop up you never ever know so go to shoot270.com to find out more you go to the website and you go to events and classes uh and you can find out more about the incredible uh, event that's happening on February 3rd. It's called the Sentinel Event. Go to GlockStore.com for all of your retail needs or stop by the world-famous Glock Store is just off of Elm Hill Pike till the Matt Murphy sent you to McGill's Glock Store.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Yes, indeed. There's Dolly. Happy birthday, Dolly. 78 years young. Although I try not to say that. I hate that phrase, 78 years young. I try to. Yeah, she's 78 years old, and she's earned every year of it. Just calm down and have a cup of. Oh, dear. Stop it. Stop it. What What do you do? What are you doing? See, Jay knows what you're doing to me. He's laughing in the background. Uh, all right. Our man, Jay St. Clair, has promised we'll get to your telephone calls and your questions via the Super Text line. James is in Westmoreland. And, James, you are joining Matt Murphy and Jay St. Clair. What's on your mind, James? Hey, what's happening, guys? Hey, so quick question. Well, it's not a quick one. Um, I was in an accident, took my car uh, to an auto body place. Uh, the insurance company that I had... Um, gave me a month of free auto or, you know, a uh, rental car. Um, it ended up taking the auto body place like seven months to fix the car. And the insurance only was supposed to cover one month of the rental car. During that seven month time, my debit card was hacked and I had to get a new debit card. So my insurance usually auto debits. And when it went to all but go debit, of course, the card didn't work. So my insurance lapsed, and I didn't wow. know it. And wow. I was in an accident wow. in that rental car. Wow. Who, who is, li am I liable, even though, I mean, I didn't have insurance, uh, but the insurance company was the, I guess, renter of the vehicle? I, I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I need to do here. Jay, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Can I? Yeah, can I ask a quick question? So, James, did the insurance company provide you any information regarding the fact that your bill wasn't getting paid? In other words, did you get email correspondence or anything? Uh, no, hmm. no, I did not. They didn't even give no. you notice. And I and I, uh, you no, got yeah, no, they, no, they did not tell me I was canceled. I did not get any notification of, of anything i bet they're, um, i bet they're denying that uh yes they are yeah what do you think jay and, you know i think this james i wouldn't give up uh talking to the insurance company because i'm uh, you know i'm not familiar with this fine point of uh, tennessee law but i suspect they're required to give you notice of cancellation uh unless and, they can prove that they did that, I think you've got a good claim against that insurance company. That they would have to pay for the damages of the wrecked rental car? Yeah, if they did well, not give uh, me notification of cancellation? I, that's, I think that's your best argument. Well, were, okay. Was that second accident your fault? Yes. It was, well, I mean, it, deer in the road, I swerved, went into the ditch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, got it. So it's not like, yeah. So, yeah, that, I would uh, get back in touch with your insurance company and say, look, you never gave me notice of this cancellation. It was on auto draft. Uh, you know, I got hacked. You know, just explain the circumstances to them. Right. Uh, okay. But, you know, they're probably just going to keep saying no because that's what insurance companies do, James. So, uh, you know, once you try it, and, and I don't want to be pessimistic, but it doesn't work, then you just kind of get a lawyer. Lawyer letters are more effective. Yeah, I was about, uh, Jay, I'm, man, you have taught me well over the years, Jay, because I was about to say, does this man need a lawyer letter? Yep. Right. You know what we mean, James? I mean, you get a letter with lawyer's letterhead over it saying, hey, buddy, uh, my client has retained my services and yada, yada, yada. Uh, it goes a long way. Right. Okay. okay. Us, James, who's the insurance company? Uh, progressive. Do you have an agent? Yes. Uh, you absolutely need to be talking to your agent. That's the person you need to talk to. Go by his office and sit down and talk to him face-to-face. -face. Do you have any kind okay. of personal relationship with the agent? No, sir. No. How long have you been with him? Uh, a little over a year. I would go by his office, make an appointment, go by his office, sit down, look him eye to eye, and tell him what happened Right. Okay. And and if he doesn't seem interested in the conversation about saying, look, I don't want to have to get a lawyer involved with this, but if Progressive is not going to make this right, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And All please, right. James, I I am intrigued enough. Please call us back and let us know what happened. I will. I absolutely will. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. There's uh, there's Jane. That's what it's all about right there. Yeah, I mean – 
Uh, lawyer letters, I know that we are loath to pick up a phone and call lawyers, Jay, because we think it's going to cost us a lot of money. And, you know, it, it might cost you a little money to pick up a phone and call a lawyer. But they are there, there's a reason why, I mean, it, I mean it, it just works. I mean, it makes a difference. It, it absolutely makes a difference. Uh, let's see, from James to, I believe this is Delania. Am I pronouncing that correctly, ma'am? Delania? Hi, it's Delana. Delana. Hello, Delana. You're yeah. on with Jay and Matt. How are you? Are you married hey, to I'm Kevin doing well. Harvick? Ma'am, are you married to Kevin Harvick? I'm not. Uh, well. But but I have heard her name. I'm older than her. I had it first. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Delana, what's on your day? What's on your mind? Um, I wanted uh, to just make a comment and then ask a question about the Trump Fannie Willis situation. Um, it seems to me that you know, of course, she hired this ADA to take this case um, to prosecute Trump because she was in a relationship with him, and it seems that she wanted him to be her puppet that she could control and prosecute Trump the way she would have. Um, so with that being said, if, if there's going to be a hearing like an ethics hearing against Miss Willis, my question is, do you think they would go further and also um, maybe hold an ethics hearing against the ADA who accepted that astronomical amount of money and wined and dined and, uh, and took Miss Willis on trips? Because it seems to me they're both culpable of uh, an ethics violation, not just her, but also him. I don't, I don't know his name, but um, it seems that they were both, uh, quote, unquote, in bed together uh, on this little, <clears throat> um, yes, I will be whatever you want to call it, to, right. to, you know, I, I to get shocked. Trump. Yeah, I'd be shocked if the investigation does not include both of them. They absolutely okay, both that's them. I was hopeful Listen, for that because, yeah, you know, if you're going to so pay much someone much. that much money and it's someone that you're having a relationship with, it's obvious why you chose that ADA to handle the case. Yeah, but Delaney, remember this, too. I have to remind Matt of this a lot. Lawyers are people, too, ma'am. We got to eat. Like well, people. yeah. We got to eat. Oh, boy. Here we go. Um, it, Here we go. Yeah, they, you know, when he starts, uh, Delano, when he starts poor mouth, and I just, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do with him. Thank you for the call. God bless you out there in Chapel Hill. Uh, you know, we we like to pick on you, Jay. You're you're my favorite lawyer, but that's not really a high bar. But you are my favorite lawyer. <laughs> Uh, that's like saying you're my favorite criminal. Right. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but, yeah pretty much the same thing. Uh, by the way, speaking of the law, just this just in as we're talking here, I looked up on monitor number three, and I'm a little bit surprised in this. Uh, Alec Baldwin, um, I, you know the actor, Jay, Alec Baldwin, and you probably right. remember this situation where yeah, the shooting. The right shooting well, the film set. He's been indicted. Uh, they uh, they've now indicted Alec Baldwin. I don't know what the specifics of the charges against him are, uh, but he's now been indicted in the Rust shooting. Um, and you know what? I don't like. I, I mean, maybe this is a different time for a, a different subject for a different time. But I, I I I have enough acting experience, and I understand the process enough. And I look. This is not me saying I love Alec Baldwin or love his politics. I don't, and I don't. But I. I just have a hard time understanding how you get a conviction uh, because the actor does not bear responsibility for the loading and unloading of that gun. They just don't. Right, right. Uh, but anyway, I just uh, just note that because it was up on our monitor just moments ago. Oh, it's yeah, well, it is. It's been a long time, so uh, you know they've been investigating it a lot. It'll be it'll be interesting to see the specifics, man, and what they specifically are charging them with. Now, I can understand why you would charge others on the set, the prop master on the set, the uh, uh, the, the individuals responsible for the guns specifically. And I forget armor. The armor. Is it armor? armor yeah. yeah, it's the armorer on the set. I understand how you would charge them. Uh, but more often than not, I mean, if you expect that the actors and actresses bear ultimate responsibility for whether or not these are things that could hurt other people, I think you're in a world of hurt from the entertainment perspective, but that's just me. All right, uh, let's see. Ethan is in Nashville. Ethan, you're on with Jay St. Clair. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, man. Um, so just real quick, I, 
I was just thinking about, you know, how you guys are talking about a, a an invasion happening on the U.S. that's basically happening intentionally by the administration that's in power. And then and we also talk about how, you know, basically a lot of our high-level politicians are bought out by our adversaries. And I, I think about the Second Amendment and how we have the right to bear arms to protect ourselves against a tyrannical government, whether – you know, whether it's individual acts of tyranny or tyranny on a grand scale. And I I just wonder, you know, how far do we have to go before we define this as as tyrannical? And, you know, and and, and what can we do about it without being called insurrectionist? Well, the, the, the solution, the constitutional solution, Ethan, is the ballot box. If we don't like what our elected politicians are doing, we got to bubble them out. I mean, that, that's the short, simple answer to that. I, th- I think you're maybe asking a bigger question. I think, I think you're asking if, if uh, our government has become the equivalent of the British government under George III, is it time for us to declare our independence? I think that's kind of what you're hinting at. And I don't know yeah. if there's anything between the two, Ethan. I mean, if we don't like what our elected officials are doing, we've got two solutions. One is to vote them out. The other is revolution. I'm, I'm just and saying it, as it's, plainly as I can. It's, ha- it's hard because they've they've divided us and they've conquered us to the point where we have uh, we're not confident enough as, as a as you know as a group of people to to stand together, band together, and stand up against it. We have a bunch of individuals that stand up, you know, it, it, you know, at, at one time, but they don't have enough people banding together. Well, most well, people. I, that... I hear you, Ethan, but don't don't forget what happened in 2016. <laughs> Donald J. Trump was elected president of the united states because of a lot of these same issues and i and i think the people recognizing what happened in 2020 i think we were immune to the idea of what happened in 2020 happening ethan uh and from a political perspective i think people are far more awake uh than they were even in 2020 here's how what i would say ethan um it, the easiest example, and it's an unfortunate one because you get into issues of racism and slavery and that sort of thing, but the easiest way to look at this is to look at it through the lens of the build up to the Civil War. And most people, I mean, I, I won't say most people, I won't include the three of us, but here's what I would say that even in at the beginning of our country, at the beginning of our country, we were debating slavery. We were debating these issues involving involuntary servitude. And at the beginning of our country, there was a schism between the North and the South. And that schism only became greater as the uh, North became more industrialized and the South remained agrarian. It took 45 years for the South to build up the courage and frustration to say no more. And I say that recognizing that part of the reason that they wanted to do it was an evil institution called slavery. But so I'm not. I'm not saying that they were courageous in a positive way. I'm just saying that that's how long it took. So uh, these are not processes that happen overnight. Um, and the dynamic that we would have to get to in order to come to that decision that Jay talked about, you know, that the ballot box were not getting those results. And Jay, I would I would add to your analysis, and I think it's dead on, uh, that we are in a frightening time because there is a fear that no matter what we do or how many of us vote, that the game is rigged. Mm-hmm. And and I'm fearful of a lack of trust in the system creating a further schism in this country. It, it's a danger. I think it's a, it's a distinct danger. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to get to one more. Well, Yankees in Beach Grove. Let's, uh, let's talk to Yankee. He has a thought on insurance policies. Hey, Yankee, how are you? I'm doing fine, sir. How about yourself? I'm doing well. You got a question for Jay or a thought? Yeah, well, well, the gentleman with progressive, he's dealing with progressive and I own a towing company and I deal with progressive on a regular basis. They will do anything that they possibly can to wiggle out from money paying anything. And what one of the things is, um, and I got burned on this, they had a $3,700 record bill. And the guy called me and he said, well, we just ain't paying it. Well, I wasn't smart enough to read the law, but I got educated real quick after that little fiasco. 
and they are responsible to pay any record bills or any tow bills plus storage, and it's a Tennessee Code's annotated bill. And what they try to do now is they're telling the customer, well, yeah, you know, we're going to settle up with you on your car, and but the customer never says, well, you owe a record bill. And they'll wiggle out from underneath it, and that customer is actually responsible for the wit- for the record bill because they've settled their case with Progressive or, who, or whichever insurance company, and they're all the same way. They're all, I pay $750 a month in truck insurance. So I've never gotten a break from the insurance companies. I've never had an accident, never had a claim. But it's gone up every year nonstop. And that's just the way it is. They're going to try to do everything they can to pad their books wow. and get their books. You know. I, this is not, and, and Yankee, thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. I, 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 I will say this. You know, regardless of which insurance company you're dealing with, I've said for a long time, and this is not even knocking the insurance companies when I say it. It's a reality. Insurance companies are not in the business of paying out claims. They're in right. the business of collecting premiums. Right. Right? The Every insurance company is going to make sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed before they pay out a claim. They just are. And some are worse than others. And uh, because they're big and you're small, they're powerful and you're not. And like Jay mentioned a little while ago, Jay, I mean, you're, you're right. Sometimes it takes them understanding that you're serious and you're willing to go there. And there is a court of law in order to get what you're trying to accomplish. But um, sometimes it just takes a a harangue, man. A harangue. That's a great word. You got to harangue them. Got to harangue them. Uh, Jay, I hope you have a wonderful. How was, uh, uh, real quick, 30 seconds. How was last weekend on the track? You do well? Did you get to go? No, cold. And I've still got these spark plug wire problems. It's driving me nuts, man. But I think I got it fixed out. Uh, I think I am going to go racing, full-on wheel-to-wheel racing, at a track you may have heard of on April 6th. Really? Uh, Daytona International Speedway. (laughs) (laughs) What? All right. This merits an off-air conversation. Expect a call from me at 3.05 this afternoon, all right? Perfect. All right. All right. I'll see you soon, Jay. Thank you so much. There's Jay St. Clair with Fry Jay. What a great guy and what a great hour it always is. It's 153 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
It's 2 o'clock. I'm Mac Morey with your top stories. Currently 22 degrees in Nashville. Wind chill advisory in effect from 10 p.m. this evening to noon tomorrow. We could see wind chills as low as negative 10 tonight and tomorrow morning. Got a forecast coming up in two minutes. U.S. military ships are in the Middle East region in case they're needed for rescue missions. Maggie Ruley talked to Marines on the USS Bataan in the Mediterranean who say they feel their presence there is a deterrence for the region. Here's Captain Earl Earhart. I think that there is always something to be said for the United States being postured in a very close region and being right next to someone saying, hey, the U.S. isn't just the, the big giant kind of far away, but they're right in your backyard. And us being in the Persian Gulf or the Red Sea or all the different straits we've been to, I do think that makes a big difference with our deterrence role. A big lawsuit. The U.S. Department of Justice has now joined a lawsuit against the NCAA that was joined by Tennessee Attorney General Jonathan Scrimetti. General Scrimetti and others around the nation are trying to make it so that athletes who transfer schools more than once in Division I don't have to wait a year before playing in the games. The lawsuit also challenges transfer rules regarding players' ability to sell their image and likeness. Currently, there is a preliminary injunction that is holding the NCAA from keeping athletes from competing, and that lasts until the end of this academic year. And a trial date has yet to be scheduled. And sticking with sports, Sports Illustrated may have published their last issue. Here's Dave Packer. Mass layoffs at Sports Illustrated. Staff at the publication notified Friday their jobs were being terminated. That according to a statement from the publication's union, Authentic Brand Group, which paid $110 million to buy Sports Illustrated five years ago, recently terminated a licensing deal with the Arena Group to publish the magazine in print and digital. That after Arena missed a multi-million dollar payment, reports front office sports. Sports Illustrated first published in 1954. And that is the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. Hey, friends, it's Matt Murphy for Craft Body Scan. Let me tell you something, folks. It's 2024, and it's time to, to get with your help they, mentally and actually. And I want you to do that through Craft Body Scan. Let me tell you what I mean. Craft Body Scan came to Nashville last year, uh, but they've been doing this around the country since 2017, and they just opened a shop right here in downtown Nashville. And what they are doing, and they're offering you an opportunity to stop by, come in, uh, sit down, speak with them about your health, and go through a CT scan. Uh, they have a variety of different types to, to tell you about, but the one that I want to tell you about today is the Couples Heart and Lung Scan. They will scan your heart, scan your lungs, and and get one of their board-certified radiologists to look over it, and they will tell you if they see anything, any abnormalities. Uh, this can identify issues within the body long before you feel any issues. And knowing that heart disease is the number one killer in the United States of America and lung cancer is the number one cancer killer in the United States of America, this is important. If you've ever smoked or really if you've uh, if you have lived your life, you need to, you owe it to yourself to do this for $149 for you and a couple, uh, someone, a loved one in your life, a spouse, a significant other. This is over a $2,000 value. Do this for yourself. Do this for your family. Get in front of the symptoms that are possible and give yourself peace of mind with Craft Body Scan. Go to craftbodyscan.com or better yet, 
Give them a call and schedule an appointment today. 615-436-1000. 436-1000. <laughs> Super Talk 997 WT and I'm I'm giggling for a number of reasons. Uh it is a First Amendment Freestyle Friday, soon to be renamed by the way. I, I might just go ahead and announce it today that oh, we're gonna wow. we're gonna rename First Amendment Freestyle Whoa. Friday. I came up with a different concept uh, that it's I want to be called Leave Us Alone Friday. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 don't leave us alone. Don't listen to Headless Bell. Uh, So uh, Jason writes in and says, I just heard Mac already coughing. No work for him on Monday. That's probably fair. It's a it's a it's a soft launch during the uh, during the warm (laughs) during the warm months. It's music festivals during the cold months. It's illness. A little cough, a little Uh, um, a little uh, a little KC flu. Yeah, let's let's hope not. I know Sunday night is the game. Sunday evening. What is it? Five o'clock start, something like that. Yeah, five thirty, I think. Yep, going to be cold. Yep. Uh, the uh, the bill. What do they call themselves? Bills Nation, Bills Mafia, Bills whatever Mafia. it is. Uh, they were out. Um, I think they've been snow shoveling. Do you know? Did you hear that they pay them like twenty bucks an hour to shovel the stadium? It's embarrassing. What do you mean it's embarrassing? You've got a billion dollar owner, and this is one of the biggest events of the year, and you you don't have a company hired to go get this done. You're you're offering twenty dollars an hour and some free pizza. Well, some fan bases enjoy it to support their team. I mean, I don't um, know. I don't know how the. I don't know how the cheap. I don't know how the Chiefs do it, uh, but these fan bases are earning some cash. Uh, you know, they're having some pizza pie. They feel more a part of the team. I think it's great. I think it's fabulous. And what, they're obviously not up to the stat. Did you see the game last week? You had you had fans barreling through feet of snow to get to their seats. So obviously, these fans who are who are great. I'm sure they're, it's a great experience for them to go shovel some snow. They don't have enough. It's actually a pretty interesting conversation, but that's fair. You done? <laughs> you finished? I mean, I'll let you do the hour if you want it. And, no, and, 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 any, anytime you're ready to start picking content selection, I'll let you go for it. it I'll tell you what. I, I tell you what. I promise you, you start doing my job, I start doing my job. I know who's going to get up to speed first. Anyway, so, sorry. I had to... <laughs> The claws. That's like I was enjoying the conversation. I was too. I was all over there. <laughs> Sorry, I was falling asleep. <laughs> well, I mean, far be it from us to figure out what we're going to actually trade today, or what, what we're going to draft today, rather. So, for those that don't know, on Fridays we have something that we call Friday Mac Attack. We're about to introduce it. As a matter of fact, let's just go let's ahead and introduce it. it. Let's just go ahead and introduce it. Woo! It's time for Friday Mac Attack. Oh, yeah. 100%. I'm prepared. Afternoon. <laughs> Livia, hang in there. I want to talk to Livia desperately at 235, by the way, because Bell told me what Livia is holding on. Livia is attempt, going to attempt me to tell me that Dolly Parton is a bad person. Is that right? Is that correct? That would be correct. Uh, so, Livia, you just hang in there. I want, I want a piece of you coming up at 235. Oh, that's appointment radio. I'm very excited for this. Right now, we have Mac Mori in studio with us. Uh his beloved Chiefs are playing the Bills this weekend. Don't know if you heard 4 5:30 something like that on Sunday afternoon. I'll be watching and I don't know who I'm rooting for yet. Mm. I was rooting for your Chiefs last week. I know you were. I, I can't give it, it I can't give it to you every week. No, I appreciate it. I don't know I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with it. I just I I've got I got a soft spot in my heart for Bills fans. No, but I have get you ever it. been to Buffalo? I'd love to go. Buffalo I wish I was going sucks, this weekend. Man. Buffalo's really? horrible. I mean, it's just a, it's just, <laughs> it just Cold. makes you, I mean, you go there and you just feel bad. You feel bad for yourself. You start reflecting on <laughs> what have I done with my life to be here? And then you imagine having to live there. Really? It's awful. But you liked the wings though when you went, right? Oh, the wings were tip top. Good very wings. Good. See, that's, we that's actually, we, they say don't go to the original. There are really? a couple of other places that are better. I think Anchor Bars is the original, downtown Buffalo. That were supposedly the originators of the Buffalo Wing. Uh, but now I'm told that Anchor Bar has gotten too commercial. And so we went to a different place. But, oh, my gosh, tip top. I mean, I would go back for just I the love wings. wings. Top five favorite food. Oh, yeah, we should do favorite foods today. But that's not what we're doing, apparently. So normally. <laughs> I, know, I know what we're doing. 
What are we doing? I have no clue. I don't either. <laughs> so uh, normally, uh, to make this segment a little more smooth, uh, Mac Mori will alert Bell Kay and myself as to the subject matter yes. of our draft on Friday's Mac Attack. Uh, and you have not alerted us. You have not told us. Anything. Yeah, we usually get a text prior to the show, yeah, actually. Yeah, right? like, hey, night here's what I'm thinking. Yeah, or, yeah, you this know. Is what I've been, and yeah, that didn't happen this week. And I just wanted to see what, what would happen. So, right, I mean, I'm literally a <laughs> second and a half before I go in the air. <laughs> Maury just starts, what did, what did you say? I don't even remember what you said. I like had to get your attention. You're about yeah. to turn on the mic and right. do your job. I'm like, the intro music's in. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. soda? You want to draft soda? <laughs> soda? He said soda. <laughs> and then you came up, what was your other idea? Snow day activities. <laughs> but there's like four. That's worse. <laughs> After one round, it's worse than soda. All right, snow day activities. Oh, there's a ton of snow day activities. Okay, I, know, I, know okay. what I'm, I know what I want for number one. Sleeping. No, no. no. <laughs> And I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to do snow day activities because I don't, either. I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, because I will derail that so fast you won't know what it is. Kids are uh, kids are out of school. I don't think it's a good idea to do snow day activities. <laughs> okay, 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 fine. We'll stick with soda. <laughs> Let's stick with soda. So explain to folks. I like to get you to do this. I know you love getting uh, me to do this. Explain to folks what we do on Friday Mac Attack. Well, obviously, I, I'm a sports fan, as people know, and so, but we don't want to do sports on this segment every day. We, we, we can talk sports whenever we want. Not really, but we, we do sometimes anyway. So I'm not, I don't want that to be the segment, but I still kind of wanted that structure. So I thought, what if we do a draft and we draft different things every Friday? So we've drafted uh, uh, war cereal, movies, we've drafted cereal, we've drafted Christmas movies. cars, Christmas movies, we've drafted a bunch of different fun stuff. And so every week I usually come up with something in advance mm -hmm. and it's planned and it's it's very exciting, sometimes topical even. Uh -huh. And then there are other days where I come in and I say, hey, what about soda? What about <laughs> soda? <laughs> and I, I, I like it. I like it. We all like soda. Okay, so... Uh, We're all soda drinkers. Are we going to... I'm, I'm willing to do soda. That's good. I mean, it's your subject, so I can't really change it. Are we going to make a distinction between diet and non-diet? If you get diet Mountain Dew, that's it. Mountain Dew's okay, gone. Okay, Mountain Dew's done. Gone. Right? Yeah, well, you can't do both. Right. Yes. Okay, I agree with that. You, you in agreement with that there, Bill? Not even a little wow. bit. What do you mean? I think they're two totally separate drinks. They're two totally separate drinks between the two. Uh-huh. They're they're branded differently. They're they're packaged differently. They taste different. Mm -hmm. He's making some good points. Oh, I, I still disagree with it. <laughs> I mean, because I don't drink, I don't drink sugar based. I mean, everything I drink is diet. Same for me. Oh, great! Then I can, then I can, yeah. Right. <laughs> so if you make the distinction, if yeah, I if I take Mountain Dew away from him by saying Mountain, uh, if I say diet Mountain Dew and I'm not taking Mountain Dew away then from I him, then I get Mountain Dew. He gets Mountain Dew. Uh, that doesn't yeah, that's seem understandable. That that makes sense. I mean, okay. It okay. Takes away takes away a little bit of the drama. Okay, you ready to pick? You ready to pick? Yeah, pick. All right, ready. Uh, three, two, one, go! Oh, wow! I'll get number one. Stupid. Right now, we're Stupid. we're holding either a one or a two <laughs> behind our hands. Whatever, just go to Super Talk TV. You'll figure <laughs> out what we're doing. Uh, Bell, uh, you, you you hold up one. Uh, but wait, uh, all right, I'll do it. Go. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bell guesses. No, no, no. You have to guess if I'm doing one or two. Uh, two. Stupid. Okay, I'm. I'm, <laughs> pick, I'm I say. I, I say stupid if I'm picking last. It's awesome if it's I pick great. first. Yeah, exactly. It's great. It's wonderful. It's the best way to pick things ever. The best way in history. It's ever it's the huge. Never been done better. Never been done. They said it could be done. We did it anyway. So <laughs> the picks are Mac Mori, Bell Kay, and Matt Murphy. Which I don't know. I don't know what we're doing anymore. I do know. Don't we have flow music? Didn't we figure? <sighs> oh, we didn't. Do I didn't it? send it and put it in, but I okay, do have okay. some. I do have some for next week. He got us some flow music, Bell, because you won't do it. <laughs> well, it just ruins the segment. <laughs> It's, really, it's about the music I'll, instead I'll give of a us shout out. Since Thank we you, Chris started, Weber. since we start, okay. Keith uh, writes in and says, "Yes, there are two different drinks between diet and regular." I agree with you, Keith. I couldn't agree with you more. Wait, whoa, 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 what? I couldn't agree with you more. Oh, what? what? Matt has the last pick now. And now, I'm now, now. now he wants his diet. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what he wants. Oh, that's hilarious. Give me some more options out there. Uh, um, so yeah, we've been pick. begging for flow music since we started this segment. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And then Bell, Bell won't do it, so Mac had done it. anyway. Is, really? it three, is it three o'clock yet? Mountain Dew. Stupid. I'm sorry. I hate you. I'm so sorry. I hate all of you. As he has a Mountain Dew Zero in his hand. <laughs> Which is not Mountain Dew regular. Tastes completely different. It's not even the same. I don't same think I've had two. a Zero. 
I, 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 you know, I've decided not to ask a question that I think will cause a schism, but I'm about to cause a big time <laughs> rift in the Friday Mac Attack segment after Bell selects first in the soda draft. Go. I, I know what or he's selecting. Second. I know what he's selecting. I know what he is too. And, and he's taking my other thing away. And now oh, my two thing? favorite beverages are going to be going away. Go ahead, Bell. Hi, Pepsi. Yeah, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. He comes in with one almost every day. My my two favorite soda beverages are Mountain Dew <laughs> and Pepsi. Yeah. Pepsi was is it Pepsi? Not Pepsi. Pepsi Zero. 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 It is? Okay. Which is different than Diet Pepsi, which is different than regular Pepsi. <laughs> everybody knows it. Okay. I'm gonna say something and everybody's gonna get mad. Okay. You're but I'm saying it anyway. I'm saying it anyway. Monster. No. No, that counts. No. The that, what? That, absolutely That's an counts. energy drink. Doesn't matter. Still, so, it, is, so is Mountain Dew. No. Mountain Dew's an energy drink. It's got caffeine. Uh-huh. It's Monster's carbonated, correct? Yep. It is a soda. What? <laughs> no. Are you I, kidding me? Did I, did, no. I, did, I, did I not call it? I, oh. knew, I knew this would destroy you. I knew you would hate it. Oh, I hate this. Energy drink definition. <laughs> Jason, You're, are you on the Google machine? Uh, are you on the Google yeah, machine? I can't, I can't battle this. I mean, Jason, you've been outvoted. Uh, that's so dumb. All right. It's a good pick. Hey, maybe Shoot, next right, week well, you prep better. Draft. <laughs> <laughs> this changes my draft entirely. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't, know, I didn't know that. Uh, all right. The I, GM. The GM of Team Maury. Exactly. Like, what? Panicking. We didn't know. Got guys running around my draft room, <laughs> papers <laughs> flying. Uh, I'm still, I still got to stick to the course. We I, scattered I this th- guy. I think I, I'm on, I'm on razor. Th- I'm, I'm on thin. No, ice. you're not. I'm on thin ice. No, I think not. you are. I think you are. I, I think it's a blend now. I, th- I think, I think we're at a point in society where energy drinks and sodas, caffeinated beverages, are just they're intermingled now to me. I do agree with that because I do remember growing up and looking at energy drinks different. And now when I see someone with an energy drink, I don't think of it. It's a soda. It's the same. Yeah, I'm like, oh, he's drinking. He's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Doctor Pepper. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. Almost took it number one. Mm. But I knew my comp. I knew my competition was going to want Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew's right there. So yeah, give me DP. Classic. That's tough. It's tough. Wow. It's not an energy drink. It's not an energy drink. I'm just going to go all energy drinks now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Red I mean, why not? Red, yeah. I mean, Red yeah. Bull's but coming. trust me, Red Bull's coming. If if Bell K, if the I'm telling the dude that's picking in front of me what I'm picking. Yeah. If he doesn't pick it, and I don't think he's going to pick I, it because I, I don't think he's about it. No. What do you got? Cheer wine. Diet cheer wine. Uh, cheer wine's a good. Cheer wine. That's a good selection. You tried uh, cheer wine and vodka. I want to say yes, but it's been so long since I drank vodka, I can't remember. I would say yes, too. Uh, Mountain Dew and vodka? It'd probably be good with tequila, too, right? Yeah, it is. Mm, well, everything, everything's, <laughs> good, everything's good with tequila. <laughs> well, you've um, had enough. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go because I don't have it in my arsenal right now, and I need it on my team, and I can't go Pepsi Zero because it's already off the board. I'm going Cherry Coke Zero. Cherry Coke Zero, uh, which is just basically Cherry Coke for so our purposes. Coke, yeah. uh, so I'm and but I'm spe- I'm going specifically Cherry Coke because I prefer it. Uh, so I guess Coke is still on the board. Yeah, I would assume it is. Uh, but um, yeah, Cherry Coke, Cherry Coke Zero. There you go. I was going to go. All the zeros use like sucralose instead of aspartame, don't they? Is that the? Cr- is I, that? I think I think that's what it is. I don't know. Is there a reason where they've gone away from diet to zero? Just a marketing tool. That's really Oh, it. so they're the same? They're pretty much. I mean, they use a different artificial sweetener, but they're still okay. Are. I, I would suggest that Mount if you I've done this taste comparison before where you take a Mountain Dew Zero and you take a diet Mountain Dew and you put them side by side and you taste them and they do taste different. Which it's one do you same. prefer? Uh the Zero. Really? Well, that's the same with Pepsi's too. The diet Pepsi's are yeah. I prefer the zero too. The the diet drinks have a diety taste to them, and I yes. think that's probably the aspartame. Yes. So, I agree. I can't do the diety taste. I know it instantly. I cannot do it. No. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, but yeah, I mean, obviously you need to because look how skinny you are. <laughs> Give me um, this is a throwback pick, in ode to a uh, Kansas City Chief, Lynn Dawson, uh, my throwback. my late granddad. Uh, give me squirt. 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 Diet yeah. squirt's pretty good too. Squirt's great. I've had diet. It's like a grapefruit. 
Love it's it. really good. Love it. That's a good Word. selection. That's, I, that's, I suppose. That's a throwback to the mid 2000s. Squirt. Squirt. <laughs> that's a new nickname for Maury. He's got like 14 of them. Squirt. <laughs> Cougar Chow's the best one, though. You don't like, you don't care for, no, I don't think we should you do don't that. care for Squirt? I don't. I'm regretting my pick <laughs> instantly. Squirting your eyes. Uh, um, if, if you're Squirt, I'm going to go Big Red. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get in front of your selection, but I'll go right ahead. Fresca. Fresca? Fresca. I, is Fresca a soda? It's yes. carbonated, and you changed the rules, so you can't. <laughs> you can't don't do that. Don't start that it's with It's actually me. It's a diet beverage that isn't marketed as a diet beverage. It just, it's Fresca. It's Fresca. It's carbonated. It's uh, It was the original. I mean, I want to say that Fresca was one of the original carbonated flavored like waters. That's what I would look at a Fresca as, like a carbonated flavored water. I don't even. I don't even know what it's supposed to be a competitor to. Whether it's Mountain Dew or. I mean, when it came out, it kind of. And this is before your time, or it kind of stood on its own. It was. It was out there on its own island, much like, like Zima. Like what the way Tab Zima. was when Tab first came out? Oh, I loved Tab. Ugh, God, I was such a fan nasty. of Tab. Uh, it had such a disgusting taste, I liked it. It was. It, 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 was. Went, it went all the way around the taste profile and came back to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is so like, bad, it's gross, good. Gross, gross, <laughs> gross, gross. Oh, there's something going on here. I don't know what's happening. I like it. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. My, my mom just texted me and said, Squirt and Fresca, same thing. No, no, I would no, disagree with that. No, 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 no completely no. different. Uh, now, I mean, same squirt's thing. It's not diet, and well, you can get diet squirts hard, but you can find diet. Yeah, squirt. it's hard to find normal squirt right now. And I'm going big red, by the way. <laughs> do you like big red? I do like big red. It's I very can. sweet, very sweet. I, very, very sweet. sweet but I don't do, like it. If you do diet big red and then cut it with vodka, it's very good. <laughs> really, all of these things. Okay, if you cut yeah, with exactly, vodka, they're much insane. better. Much, much better. Isn't Fresca like ginger ale? No. 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 And Keith writes in Sun Drop. Uh, Keith, I, 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 uh, how, nice. how to tell me you grew up in a trailer park without telling me you grew <laughs> up in a trailer park? <laughs> you, you like Sun Drop or you like that uh, Czech Cola? Oh, man. Yeah, no, no, no. Not on that. Czech Cola. I mean, it tastes like you're poor. <laughs> I don't remember that one. Czech Cola is the Winn-Dixie brand of cola. Oh, oh, God. oh, yes. I know exactly what you're talking about now. And, yes. and by the way, this is coming from a place of honesty and earnestness because we drank Czech Cola when I was a kid <laughs> uh, because it was so cheap. And, when, and I hated it. I hated it. Really? I hated everything about it. All the other kids got Coca-Cola. Yeah. And I got Czech Cola. And they're looking at me like, oh, okay, you have to understand yeah. what just You have to understand <laughs> okay. what just happened. He's ragging Czech Cola while raving about Tab. <laughs> Well, I like that. That's good. That's just those two things just are a dichotomy. You know, it is what it is. Okay, there you go. Uh, who's winning this weekend? Before, while we've got you, before you have to go back and put your news hat back on. Uh, the Ravens will beat the Texans. Yep. The Lions will beat the Buccaneers at home and keep I'm not, this. I'm not so sure. It's either going to be an amazing game or a blowout. Those are the two options. Uh huh. Sure. Um, and then what do we've got? We've got my Chiefs will win, but I was going to say, but what's the other game? I'm I'm, I'm blanking right now. The other NFC game. Uh, uh, 49ers. That Packers will. Get very close, and it'll be very, very exciting. But at the end of the game, the Niners will win. Who's the most dangerous team for an upset? The Packers? Packers, and if you if you count the Chiefs, then yes. Because the Chiefs are an upset, would be an upset. They're two and a half point underdogs. I mean, it's hard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hard I'm not going to gonna count that either. So, yes, I would say the Packers. Texans are super fun. I just think Baltimore is the best team in the league. I got a feeling about the Bucs, and you, but you know what? Guess, guess what? I had a feeling about the Browns, <laughs> and... I'm putting my money on Detroit this weekend, boys. Uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah, of course. Uh, there's Friday Mac Attack with your one and only Squirt, a.k.a. Cougar Chow. It's 224 on Super Dog. Hey, if you uh, if you've been you know holed up because you can't get out because of the snow and the ice and all of that, if you have the ability, the roads are looking pretty good. I would say that. Get out and about and get to Savory Spice over the weekend. Spice up that food game by spicing up that spice game. Spice up that spi spice game at Savory Spice. I've mentioned this before. They've got something for just about every cut of meat you could imagine. Whether you're cooking chicken or salmon, uh, we did some. Um, uh, we had a thing the other day. 
uh, with chicken and avocados, and it was a creamy sauce involved. I'm not even sure what it was, but uh, the wife used, I want to say she used some lemon pepper seasoning and some other items from Savory Spice. So, so delicious. And then I always top it off just about everything um, with the Alderwood smoked sea salt uh, as just like a flavor enhancer, and I absolutely love it. That stuff goes on everything for me. They've got different flavored salts. They've got spices. They've got peppers. They've got everything you can imagine for the cook in your life. And if you're just getting started, they can help you out in that regard, too. They've got different blends and whatnot. Go buy Savory Spice and see the difference. If you want to up your food game, you up your spice game. And if you want to up your spice game, you go to Savory Spice. Two locations. One's in l l Market right in Nashville. That's on Charlotte Pike. The other is in Franklin, just off the square. When you swing in, stop by, say hello to the gang, Holly, David, and the rest of the crew, and tell them that Matt Murphy sent you to Savory Spice. Keeping an eye on the skies, a wind chill advisory is still in effect. Taking a look at one of pre- former President Trump's court cases and a blood shortage around the volunteer state. Take a look at it. 230 Super Talk, 997 WTN. Thank you, Squirt. 228 Super Talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what I'm, just I proud. I'm just proud I got through it without laughing. I'm sitting here <laughs> thinking I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Sun drop. By the way, I hate Mellow Yellow so much. Even when you took Mountain Dew, I, I'm not touching no, Mellow Yellow. No, no, not Mellow Yellow. Oh, come on. I agree. I don't know what it is. But it's just they don't they don't have it. No. They don't have it. Not for me. Uh, Livia <laughs> is uh, has been holding for some time out of Hendersonville. And Livia, you are next on the Matt Murphy Show on Supertalk 99.7 WTN. How are you? Um, hey, Matt. Uh, my name is Lydia. And, oh, is it Lydia um, with Lydia with a D? That's correct. Oh, Lydia. My, my my apologies. Hello, Lydia. Yeah, sure. So uh, I know I'm kind of late to the party, Matt, but I wanted to welcome you to Nashville. Thank you. <laughs> um, I loved Phil Valentine, and when you came on the air, it it took me a while to um, get to the point where you have really grown on me. I love your energy and your sense of humor. 
and I'm so glad you're here. Um, I wanted, uh, I've been holding because this is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I heard you speak earlier this morning um, about pedophiles and then pedophilia, and then you um, commented on Dolly Parton's birthday, and um, it, it, um, it struck a bell with me, and this is very personal to me. Um, I'm a public school educator. I, I'm an elementary school teacher. And one of her songs, and, and please don't get me wrong, she is extremely beautiful, talented, oozing with talent on the screen. Uh, her songs, her voice, um, and she's incredibly talented, and I've loved her for a long time. However, one of her songs is being used to groom our dear little children. Um, it is a song, I Am a Rainbow. Um, maybe you can have your staff pull it up. Um, Dolly Parton, I'm a Rainbow, lyric video, and it's for children. And this song uh, is being played in elementary schools, um, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and up. And I personally um, witnessed, um, I was teaching, uh, in this element, in this elementary school, L- and- Lydia, you've you've held so long. I want you to do me a favor because I just looked up at the clock, and Mac Morey's got newscast to do, and I and I can't violate the clock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Lydia on hold, and we'll get back to you in just a moment. And I'll pull up the lyrics to "I Am a Rainbow," and we'll discuss. Right now, it's time for news. It's two thirty one on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Two thirty one. I'm Mac Morey with your top stories right now. Twenty two degrees and cloudy in Nashville. No more wintry mix falling, but a wind chill advisory is in effect until noon tomorrow. Could see wind chill values of down to negative ten degrees. Weather forecast on the way in ten, two minutes. In the civil fraud case against former President Trump, New York Attorney General Letitia James released video today of Trump's April deposition, where he sat for five hours with prosecutors talking about his business, his wealth, and more. Aaron Katursky. They showed evidence that Trump just kind of wanted to appear wealthier than he was. If somebody said he was worth a billion, he'd say make it two. If it was two billion, he'd say make it three. And Trump never took the bait during the deposition, but it does give us a rare window into the kind of tactics that he employed to kind of exaggerate uh, how successful he perhaps really was. Right now in Tennessee, News 2 reports that Blood Nashville is asking more than 70 hospitals around the region to stop doing elective surgeries amid a blood shortage. And with all this winter weather, many donation centers have had to close, and that has put added stress on the overall blood supply, mainly in blood types O negative and O positive. Blood Assurance is continuing to ask anyone who can safely get outside and give blood to make an appointment. And this just in, in the NFL, the Las Vegas Raiders are working to finalize a deal to hire Antonio Pierce as their next head coach. He was the interim head coach for the last nine games of the season after they fired Josh McDaniels. He went 5-4 and four in those nine games, including 3-1 and one in the division AFC West. That is the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. Regardless of where you live and regardless of where your pain might be, if you're in pain right now at the beginning of 2024, I have a solution for you in the form of the Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief. When Dr. Gill started his clinic in Franklin 30-plus years ago, he understood a couple of things. One, he wanted a team approach. He wanted to make sure that he had uh, medical individuals, chiropractors, and doctors all 
uh, that were trained in the ways that he does his business, and he developed that staff. And so now he's got Dr. Wendy, Dr. Dominic, Dr. V, and the rest of the crew, well over 100 years' experience in chiropractic care. Number two, he recognized uh, the need to advance chiropractic care uh, in a way that helps people um, who have more issues than just spinal related issues. We're talking soft tissue issues, and they're doing that right now with the red light therapy, the class five laser system, plus the spinal decompression, which is just incredible, which I've utilized at the Dr. Gill Center myself. So I want you to kick off the new year considering that you could be pain free or your pain could be significantly diminished without the need for regular shots or for with pills. Uh, a lot of folks take pills just to get through the day. Let's not do that in 2024. Let's go to the Dr. Gill Center together. The Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief in Franklin, 615-882-4838, 882-4838. Hey, friends, Matt Murphy, you know, you're probably thinking about that heater. Has your heater run properly during these cold conditions? Maybe you've not been able to get the temperature conditions to a comfortable level in your home and you're worried about that. Well, give a call to Jeff Eddy and Efficient Heating and Cooling. I like to rhyme it and say, you know, if your heater's not ready, call Jeff Eddy. Uh, but it is true that Jeff Eddy's ready, willing, and able to get out to you. One of his team members can be there jiffy quick, and they can fix what ails your heating unit. It is a frustrating thing when it goes out during these cold, cold winter days and nights. Uh, but if it is the case that it goes out tonight or over the weekend, they're not going to charge you extra just because it's the weekend. Jeff Eddy doesn't believe in it. He knows your heater doesn't know what day it is or what time it is. So why should you have to pay more? Because it's a Saturday afternoon. So they keep invoices low by not charging you any overtime rates for the nights or the weekends. Isn't that nice? Uh, they fix what ails your heater, meaning they're not going to try to upsell you just because your heater has gone out. But if it's time, they'll tell you that too. And if it is time, they're a diamond contractor with Mitsubishi Electric and Elite Pro Partner with Ream. Give them a call if you need to. For maintenance, they can get that done as well. If you need a second opinion on something, call Jeff Eddy. And Efficient Heating and Cooling, EfficientHVAC.net, EfficientHVAC.net, or 615-784-4424. Happy birthday, Dolly. Super Talk 99.7 WTN, 239. 
Uh, some headlines breaking as we've been on air this afternoon. One, the, the biggest really breaking over the course of our time on the air today was that Alec Baldwin, uh, star of stage and screen, noted leftist, has now been charged. He has been indicted, and we're waiting on details of said indictment, but he has been indicted uh, over the... Uh, over the movie Rust and his participation in the filming of a scene that eventually led to an individual dying as a result of a gun being loaded with actual ammunition as opposed to blanks. Um, I think we don't have enough time to get into it right now, but I would suggest to you that it is not the response. You could perhaps charge him, and I guess if they're indicting him as an executive producer of the production, which he was a producer of some sort, uh, the producers ultimately have responsibility for everything that goes on on set. But I don't know how you charge him as an actor um, who is depending on the armorer and the props master more broadly in order to handle the guns before they get on set and to make sure that everything is as safe as possible. Is it an actor's responsibility to a certain degree? Sure. Uh, but it is primarily and first and foremost the responsibility of those weapons masters that have been hired specifically for the duty to make sure that everything is safe do you know specifically what the charge is like is it negligent homicide or is it manslaughter or or homicide i'm gonna look that up i'll look it up and i'll tell you right after we finish up with lydia who has called in from hendersonville with a concern <laughs> about a song apparently written uh it appeared on an album i believe in you from 2017 it's called i am a rainbow and I have the lyrics pulled up here, Lydia, uh, and I'll just share them with folks. It's a pretty straightforward sure. tune. I'm a rainbow. I'm every color. I'm every hue. I'm a rainbow. I'm a rainbow. I know you are a rainbow, too. To make a rainbow, you must have rain. You must have sunshine, joy, and pain. Lots of hues and different shades and poof like magic. A rainbow's made. And then it goes into the chorus again. You're special. There's no doubt. You're what rainbows are all about. Rainbow boys and rainbow girls. So love a lot and color the world. I'm a rainbow. I'm a rainbow. I'm every color. I'm every hue. I'm a rainbow. I'm a rainbow. I know you are a rainbow, too. So, Lydia, you yeah. feel like this is a song that's being used for nefarious purposes. Yes, Matt, I've seen it firsthand. This is um, a dog whistle song, the LGBTQ agenda for children. I have witnessed it firsthand. Teaching in an elementary school, I went into the classroom of a first grade teacher um, to get something or coordinate something with her. She has rainbows all over her classroom. She was playing this song on the big screen TV while the students were coloring a worksheet. It was a, a worksheet with black rainbow lines on it so they could fill in the colors of the rainbow and then horizontal lines so they so they could be writing, I am a rainbow. And it is filled with warm fuzzies. Warm fuzzies, a um, joyful experience. But when they grow up, they know what it means. And it's in their heart, in their emotions, deeply, deeply ingrained in them. That is grooming, my dear friend. I, I promise you. And I saw it firsthand. Wait, are you, you're saying that Dolly's doing this intentionally groom people? I do not know her motive for writing this song, sir. Well, I mean, so... I do not know. Here's, I, what, what, here's saying, what... Hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll let you talk. Let me talk for just a second, Lydia. Okay? Sure. Um, are we just going to give up that territory of rainbows to the LGBT I, com I, community? I think... Um, I don't know, Matt, but this is the same thing Adolf Hitler did to build the Third Reich. He got in the school system. There were 10-year-old boys that would stand up and do Heil Hitler L with their Lydia, arms. Lydia. Those Lydia. boys L Lydia, later stop, on stop, 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 stop. Just for a second. Just you and I talk for just a second. I, I, think, I think we can have a conversation about this without comparing Dolly Parton to Adolf Hitler. It's just grooming. I'm just telling you, Lydia. I want were, uh, you, you're doing a good so you're doing a good job at talking. I don't know that you're doing as good a job at listening. And I'm going to try it one more time. And I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to insult you. I don't think we need to compare Dolly Parton and Adolf Hitler to have a discussion about this. Do you? 
Okay, I won't. I mean, do do you? I, I don't understand why you're doing that. I'm just I'm just saying those little boys and girls are going to grow up very confused because they know they're boys and girls now, and when they get to an there's age, nothing, under, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing in this song that says that boys aren't boys and girls aren't girls. But it's the emotional attachment to a song like this and the beautiful colors they're coloring. It is grooming at an emotional, deep in Lydia, their hearts and their little do you, spirits. Do you have a problem with rainbows? Absolutely not. Okay. They're so, beautiful. But, it's, but it, it's the way that the LGBTQ community is attempting to co-opt that symbolism <laughs> that, you're, that you're concerned about. They are grooming these children to become they 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 being wait stop they being teachers. This this song is being used in the classroom by whom by teachers everywhere. Oh yes, yes. Um, Metro Public School. I'm one of the biggest Dolly Parton. By the way, I'm one of the biggest Dolly Parton fans on the planet. I've never heard of this song. I've never heard of well, it, so I don't. I don't know. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe you're. Maybe you're right. Uh, but I, I was there. Do you? Do you think uh, if someone produces um, a product, a creative product, and then another group of people use that creative product in a way that it was not intended, in order to hurt people, should we blame the producer of the product, or should we blame the people that are using it in a bad way? The people that are using it in a bad way, but I tell you, Dolly's smart enough to yank that song, yank it with all her attorneys and everything else, if she doesn't want to groom these children. Well, gay gay people run around with butterflies in their hair too. Should she stop using butterfly symbolism? No. I mean, I I'm you, not gonna I'm not you're gonna, using I, logic. Well, these but, children these uh, children won't be using logic. They have such warm fuzzies well, I, in their I want, tender I mean, little heart. I'm, you, 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 you and I are not enemies here, but I don't, I don't understand why we don't blame the people in the classroom that are doing this in the classroom as opposed Absolutely. to blaming an artist Absolutely. who wrote a song that, that there's nothing wrong with the song except that it's being used by awful people for awful purposes. So why is it, um, why is it up to Dolly Parton to remove her song from the public space when we ought to be pointing our fingers at the people that are using it badly. Correctly. But I'm telling you, Metro Public. Ma'am, I, would, I wouldn't put my kids in Metro Public School for all the money in the world. Oh, so, let me tell you one more thing about this teacher. She was getting very, very close to one of her little first grade girls. Very, very touchy. You, you teach in the very same, touchy. do you teach in the same school with her? I can't say. Why yes, not? I did. Yes, what? yes, I do. Well, I mean, you just compared Adolf Hitler and Dolly Parton. I don't know why you can't say the so, other part, but I, I mean, it, 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 it was this educator who we all believe was gay. Fine, be gay, but do not touch the little girl. There was one little girl in her classroom. She was very physically friendly with, very touchy, and she's very charming this teacher she's very touchy with the student in public in the halls all the edu other educators saw it it was leading straight to pedophilia matt okay if that's the case you need to report these people why aren't you are, have you have you reported them i did what happened i can't say because that will reveal who i am okay do you still work at that? that? I did. Does, I sure did. Okay, so does the person, I'm, I'm just curious, does the. This, this teacher um, was removed. Oh, well, that's good. That's a good thing. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if exactly. as described, I mean, that, congratulations to you. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is how that song was used. And it's very dangerous because they want I, I'm telling they you, want I'm telling you that, that gro children. groomers are disgusting, horrible people, and they use anything they possibly can in order to accomplish their goals. But that doesn't no. mean that that doesn't mean that those individual tools that can be used for good or bad should be blamed for the bad that the individuals are doing to our children.
That's what I would say to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know her motive, but... um, Whose motive? uh, Dolly's motive for writing this song. I think you... Um, I mean, you you keep going back to that, so I think maybe you have an inclination. I've got to go, Lydia. I've just... I've got to go. I I have a question. I hope... Hold on. Hold on. Let me just finish this. I'm not trying to be rude to Lydia, and I am certainly not one. And we can do entire shows. We can do entire weeks on groomers and how they attempt to accomplish their goals. And they use anything and everything. I will not cede the ground to groomers. There's nothing wrong with a rainbow. And yet we seem to have ceded that space to the LGBTQ community or and more specifically in the context of Lydia's call to groomers. Um, and I, I just don't know why we have to cede that space. Um. I, I just, I, I don't understand it. Yes, Bell. By her logic, do we not need to remove the Noah story from the Bible? Talks about a rainbow. A- am I am I misreading what she was saying? Because I, 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 Lydia seems very heartfelt, and she seems very close to this situation. And I understand that. But I think maybe we're blaming the gun for the actions of the person that pulled the trigger. In this case, it's 251 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Much more to get to, but sadly, out of time, out of time. But never you fear. The Drive with Brian Wilson is here. As a matter of fact, Brian Wilson is here right now as we... Uh I, I, Brian is not here right now. This is Kermit the Frog, <laughs> and I'd like to, I would like to sing my song "Rainbow Connections." <laughs> why are there so many songs, songs about, about rainbows? rainbows? And what's on the other side? Hello, Kermit the Frog. Kermit here. the Frog here. You know I what? Just, I'm Hold sorry. on. I need I to just mark off, help myself. I need to mark off my bingo card. I had that on my bingo card today. Uh, Brian Wilson doing uh, a Kermit that's impersonation. The, that's the only one I do. <laughs> and I, I'm not sure it's all that good. Well, I would just say this. I mean, I, I understand the woman's heart's in the right place, yeah. but I mean, we can find. I mean, we we can find bad in anything we want to as long if we look long enough. I, I don't know. I just don't like the idea of seeding the ground of rainbows to. Uh, to a certain yeah, I, group of people. I, 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 you know, you know me. I love my Dolly Parton, and and by the way, the song she put out today, the, her version of "Bridge Over Troubled Water," is amazing on her seventy eighth birthday. But oh, but boy. I, you know, I listen. I um I I don't imagine that Dolly Parton went in the studio and said, "Hey, let's do a song that uh, that uh, the gay people can use to groom <laughs> young people." I just don't. I don't think that probably happens. Yeah, I don't. I don't see that conversation happening either. What's happening on the drive this afternoon? Fred? Well, there's a lot going on. You know. I've been looking at the uh, 2024 thing in New Hampshire, and uh, does Nikki Haley have even the thinnest read of a pathway out? And uh, I've come to some conclusions about that, and I will share them coming up in just a few moments. Also, woke news uh, and, um, well, not one, but two exciting editions of Phone Your Farb Friday. It's going to be a good Friday show. Uh, so just buckle up, stay warm, and don't go outside because I, I tell you, my commute today was perhaps as dangerous as anybody else's commute. The, the sidewalk was nothing but glazed ice out there. Little slick, little slippery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sure yeah. was. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I am interested in how um, I, I want more solo Grogu stories about snow and ice. I, I love those, and yeah, I want well, more uh, of those. Well, in my they're life. not. Uh, they're, the Grogu looks at me and says, "I'm not going out there." <laughs> You can go out there. All right, Matt. We got to go now. Bye. All right. Goodbye. There's Brian Wilson. He's on the drive. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Matt. Oh, have a great weekend, folks. Hope your team wins, unless your team is the Kansas City Chiefs, in which case go Bills. Yeah, I've made a decision, Maury. Uh, It's news time with Matt Maury and Brian Wilson after that on the drive on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.